G'day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, and welcome back to my top post of the week. Now buckle in, this is going to be a long one, and I hope you enjoy it all. I don't owe your daughter my things. So a little backstory. I, female 20, live with my boyfriend, male 23, at his mother's house because I got kicked out, and we couldn't get an apartment with our no credit at the time. His mother is a whole other ball of wax. This story is about his sister. His sister has a five-year-old. She acts like a three-year-old and has been poorly raised, and it's obvious. She is always over, so I get to see firsthand how this mother chooses to raise her kid. It's mostly, I'm gonna watch whatever I wanna do, and you need to go into the other room and bother someone else, because I don't wanna deal with it. My boyfriend cleaned out our car and put his beach hat in the garage, because he was in a hurry. Little girl went into the garage and saw the hat and wanted to play with it. So my boyfriend's dad asked if she could, I said for the day I didn't care, but I would be putting it in my closet soon because I need it for this summer and I don't want it broken. She ruins everything. So she plays with it and I thought it was cute that she likes it so much. However, she ripped a part of it. I understood because she's a kid, However, to keep it from getting war damage, when she went home, I stuck it back into my room. The next day, I get an angry mother knocking on my bedroom door, saying how dare I take that hat back, and if I'm not using it, I owe it to her daughter to let her play with it. I simply laughed and said that I don't owe her crap, and that I won't be letting her play with it again since she ripped the corner of it. Her mother went nuts, talking about how rude I am for stealing her daughter's childhood, over a hat. I told her to go buy one for her, and of course she says, you need to buy her one, since you are the one who is taking it away from her, you owe her another. I laughed again and told her that I would not be buying a hat for her daughter, and that I don't owe either of them anything. I can't believe that over something so small she is freaking out. It's my stuff at the end of the day. I don't care or like the little girl, and neither does my boyfriend. We only deal with her because we live there. The fact that over something so small means that I am ruining this little girl's childhood. Well, that sucks. I don't want my stuff ruined. I don't need to have my stuff ruined just because she wants to play with it. This hat was handmade by my grandmother. I can't just go get another one. People appall me. Edit, so I seem to have made this unclear. The entitled parent in this story is my boyfriend's sister. She has a five-year-old and doesn't live with us just comes over whenever, and demands whatever she wants. His actual mother whom we live with, yes, we pay rent. Stop fudging assuming we are freeloaders, is a sweetheart, the actual mother, not uh, the freeloaders. Wow, that's like saying, since my child likes it, that means you should give it to her. That's exactly how I felt. Well, actually, since the kid destroyed your property, it is the responsibility of her mother to reimburse you for that ruined hat, and thus buy you a new one. <laughs> I love this. It shouldn't be a joke. These people need to learn real world consequences. Go to a petty claims court and sort this out, for the good of everyone involved. Give the little brat her mother's wedding dress to play with. Mother has never been married. That little girl is a one night stand baby. Hmm, find something the mother treasures and give it to her. Like mother's cigarettes maybe? <laughs> oh God. These are terrible suggestions. And our next post, by Azalea underscore. Woman demands coronavirus test for her and her kid, and starts threatening to infect hospital patients. This isn't my story, but I heard it from a friend of mine who is a GP, but now also works at a hospital to aid the nurses during the coronavirus outbreak. And I thought this story fits in here like a glove. A little backstory. Because there is a shortage of coronavirus tests where I live, only people who show very strong symptoms or are in high-risk groups are allowed to get tested. So this woman and her child, who was around 10 years old, enter the hospital, which is already really crowded and chaotic since the crisis, and loudly demands to the receptionists that she wants a coronavirus test. Since she wasn't coughing, didn't have a fever, and neither did her son, and both of them appeared healthy, the receptionist declined her demand, and told her that they can only test those who are very sick or are in high-risk groups, which they aren't. This apparently made her very angry, and she began loudly yelling that she demanded that her and her son get tested. 
When her demand was again denied, she climbed on top of the receptionist's desk and started yelling again that she and her son needed to be tested. When the receptionist got her off the desk, she then started fake coughing right in her face and around the hall. Then, she apparently threatened that if she and her son didn't get tested, she would go to the intensive care unit to cough on and infect the patients. Thankfully, at that point, security arrived and forced her out of the hospital. The police got called just in case she would return, which she thankfully didn't. Since she was irregular at the hospital, they could give the police her personal information just in case she would do the same at another hospital. That's disgusting. What's wrong with people? And our next post by Ashakali, titled, Entitled Parent Lies About Corona Symptoms to Get an Extra Plane Seat. So I've been on a terribly timed holiday to the UK since the beginning of March, and returned today to my home city. Understandably, there is loads of people wearing masks, warnings everywhere, and people trying to distance themselves and wary of others. It's not quite full-blown panic, but people are very wary. I even saw several travellers in full hazmat type cotton suits and eye goggles and masks and gloves. Anyway, my last leg of my flight, I was assigned a window seat in a three seat row. I get there, and there's a lady and a small girl who look about five to six, both with masks on. As soon as I gesture to sit, the mum pipes up and says, Oh, I just want you to know that we both have a cough, so you probably want to sit somewhere else. I've already talked to the crew. The crew member then passes, and I ask them if they have a seat, and she says to first have a seat in my original seat and wait until everyone has boarded. I then offer to sit in the aisle seat for the moment so that if I move, it's easy. The mum keeps saying, oh yeah, but I just thought you should move. I really think you'd be more comfortable. So I sit for the moment because there's people still boarding and putting bags up, etc. Now, unfortunately, the flight ends up being delayed about an hour and a half due to some passages being offloaded due to temperature screening. During this time, I sort of look around to see what other seats are available. It looks like a pretty full flight, but there are a couple of empty seats. But we don't know who else is getting on still. I'm also feeling a bit conflicted. It's a very long 13 hour flight, and I don't want to move to a crappy seat stuck between two strangers or something. But I also want to be careful and avoid people with symptoms. Now, during this waiting time, the mum and the daughter keep whispering to each other and really often coughing, with the masks on still, but they're doing it conspicuously and painfully. Happily, the crew member comes back and says I have a window seat in the front row with more legroom and an empty seat next to me. Lovely. Usually you need to pay more for those, so I move. Then later I pass the mum and daughter again, and guess what? Neither wearing masks looking happy and healthy and comfortable with an empty seat next to them. The little girl probably got to lie down and sleep. Now, I don't begrudge the girl having a nice rest on what is a very tiring long flight. She was a very well-behaved girl as well. What makes me really furious is that either A, they had such severe symptoms, which they demonstrated conspicuously when trying to convince me to move and took off their masks, or B, the mum lied about having symptoms and took advantage of the pandemic and the global fear to get themselves an extra empty seat. Seriously, piss off you entitled tramp. If she just asked nicely and told the truth, I would have moved anyway, because there was a nicer seat available. But what if there wasn't? I might have made the decision to move to a worse seat, because she scared me into thinking they might be contagious. Scum. Edit, since people keep mentioning it, she actually flagged down a crew member and said, this is the lady I was talking to you about earlier. So it seems she had already said something like, I have a cough, so could you move the person sitting next to us? And the same crew member came back and took me to my new seat. So as far as I'm aware, they knew this person had a cough, but chose to let her fly. At the moment, I don't know that airlines would force passengers out for every symptom. I mean, if you had a cough because you just had a cold or an allergy, and they pulled you off what could have been the last possible flight home, and very well could be at the moment, you'd be pretty upset. Plus, it is winter in the UK, so plenty of people do have a bit of a cough or a runny nose, or might sneeze. 
do they pull every single person off? I reckon they'd have to pull off 20 to 30% of every flight. It would create more chaos, more crowding, more unhappy travelers stuck. I would have just sat down and told them it was fine. If I caught it, I would just sue her for damages. Since she knew or suspected she was sick with corona before coming onto a steeled aircraft that recirculated the air. Would have been fun making them have to wear those silly, stupid, and uncomfortable masks for the next 13 hours as a proper karmic reward. And I can't lie, Aussie Skittles 81, I'd do the same, buddy. Entitled Mother Wants Free Food Because She Can't Dine In. So, to start out with a bit of background, I work at a restaurant, and with the coronavirus issue and quarantines, most public places have been closed down, including restaurants, unless it's for carryout. This was just the other day, so it's still pretty fresh, and as the title says, I'm sure you can figure out what happened. So let's get on to the cast. EM, entitled Karen P. <laughs> EK1, first kid about 7 to 8, EK2, about 5 to 6. I'm 23 years old, male with anxiety, relatable. I get panic attacks occasionally, relatable. M is my awesome manager. Now to the story. I was working the night shift yesterday at the front, waiting for the next to-go order, when a car pulled in and parked, before a mother and her two kids got out, and she had every Karen aspect, hair and doll. They came in, entitled mother almost dragging the kids in, and I thought, okay, to-go order, shouldn't have an issue, but was I wrong? Mommy, I'm hungry! Yes, it was really said like that. Me too, can we sit by the fire? We also have a patio area with a fire pit that people like eating at and can bring their dogs to eat with them. Entitled mother's like, okay honey, turns to me, can we sit at that table and can you turn on the fire for us? Me, a little confused, I'm sorry? Entitled mother sounding annoyed, table for three by the fire. Jeez, some people. I'm sorry, but we're closed for dine-in. We are only taking to-go orders. Would you like to see a menu? What? Ugh, fine. She pretty much snatched the menus from my hands. She took some time looking it over while her kids were complaining and yelling what they wanted. I got them some kid menus and crayons to calm them down a bit and keep them from running around the restaurant. The entitled mother then let me know what she wanted to get and I put in the order. Then came back and said, that will be $42.38. Entitled mother in one of those classic high-pitched Karen whines goes, What? Um, no. You have been so rude and won't let us eat here. We are not paying. You will give us our food for free. Look, I'm sorry that you weren't able to dine in, but that is not our fault. You do have to pay for what you ordered, or you can leave and have nothing. The entitled mother just went ballistic and had a tantrum that was probably bigger than any of her kids had had before. Good job being a good role model. So I say to her, you will have to excuse me for a second so I can get my manager. You can talk with her about your complaint while I get your food. She cuts me off. How dare you, you little piece of crap. How dare you be so rude. You kids need to start learning to respect your elders. I'll make sure you're fired for this, you freaking beer. I started to get the feeling I get when I have a panic attack coming on. So I just ignored the entitled mother and called the office phone on the one that we have at the front desk. And my manager said before I could say anything was, I'm on my way. Yes, that's what is being said here. I'm broken English, guys. She is a hero and already knows my anxiety. And whenever I have it acting up at work, she lets me step outside for a bit to calm down and have a smoke. I know it's bad for me. Manager says, after getting to the front, Okay, OP, go take a break. Hi, I'm manager. I'm the manager on today. How can I help you? Yes, I want that employee fired. He has been very rude to me this whole time and... At that point, I was far enough away I couldn't make anything out, but still hear her from the back. I stepped outside and sat down, because I tend to lose my balance when I have an attack. I calmed down for a bit and had some water and a smoke, and when I was feeling better, I went back inside. At that point, the entitled mother and her kids had left. I was told the rest from my manager. Apparently, the entitled mother said I refused to seat them, was impatient while she decided what to get, and that I was a insert homophobic slur, 
and pervert for trying to hit on her sons. My manager had none of her BS and told her that she was watching the cameras the whole time and none of which happened, while pointing to a camera that was above her. Manager says, pay for the food and leave or get no food and leave. Your choice. The entitled mother just grumbled in defeat and paid, and after getting their food, left without another word, but did put zero for the tip, go figure. At least it wasn't an issue that required the police. After that, my manager and I laughed about it for a bit, and I got a free meal and got to go home for a bit early. My manager is the best. As for all of you, I hope you're all doing okay. Make sure to be safe, wash your hands often, and let me know if you want to hear more. Might be a little while till I have a new story, but I do have some more older ones. And our next story was posted by user Vatican Cameo 714 Entitled mother expects two parties to pay for her golden child. So, my mother-in-law is the queen of entitlement. Her youngest daughter is six months younger than my oldest daughter. She and my wife were pregnant together for three months. It was hell. Anyway, when the girls were turning seven, my daughter wanted a party at the skating rink, so we made plans. Sister-in-law, who is not entitled at all, despite being raised by mother-in-law, wanted a party at the skating rink too. So mother-in-law convinced my wife to combine the parties. Fine, whatever. Except she also threw a party for her daughter the night before the skating rink party, in case someone couldn't attend the real party. So when we were all at the skating rink and the kids were having fun, mother-in-law notices that my daughter has a slightly bigger pile of presents than her daughter. She starts complaining that people are showing up without presents for both kids. This isn't whining. She is spitting venom and trying to get the other adults to hate on those who didn't bring her daughter a present. Most of those people had attended the birthday party the night before and had given her presents then, so they didn't bring one to the second party. Mother-in-law said, if you're invited to two parties, you should bring a present for each party, which was asinine enough but then father-in-law and his brother arrived. Now, my in-laws had been divorced for over 18 years, and my sister-in-law is by mother-in-law's second husband. Mother-in-law goes out of her way to be nasty about father-in-law, and is guilty of parental alienation when my wife was still a minor. So it burns her grits that my wife and father-in-law have such a great relationship. When father-in-law and brother show up with only presents for my daughter, my mother-in-law goes absolutely nuts. Now, sister-in-law has quite a load of gifts, and all the gifts from the night before. She's enjoying herself with the other kids, so she doesn't notice that my daughter has a few more gifts than she does. This is all my mother-in-law throwing a fit. She tells my wife that if father-in-law doesn't want to bring presents for her daughter, then he shouldn't have come at all. My wife had enough at this point and finally goes off. She tells mother-in-law that father-in-law had no idea the parties were combined, and that he is here to see his grandchild. That sister-in-law has more than enough presents at home, and we will never be combining birthdays again. Mother-in-law pretended to suddenly feel sick and went home early, leaving us to clean up the party package she insisted we spring for, but hardly needed. Edit, my daughter's birthday is a little over a week after Christmas, so we celebrate her half birthday. And our next story is by user Sorrowful Rose, titled Spit and Bit by Entitled Kid. So it never occurred to me that I never posted this old story here. It's also a good break, I supposed, amid all this virus entitlement swarm. So this was back during middle school when I was a very active at our local playground. Now, our park slash playground is moderately sized and has a playground on either side of the park with a fountain in the center dividing the areas. Now, what I'll call Playground 1 is our usual grounds for our game that we call Metal or Monkey Tag. This involves tag, but only allowing a stand on metal parts of the playground, railings, bars, slides, etc. Now, Playground 2 was the same, but it had no real connection between jumps for us. While in the middle of our usual game, in comes running a group of kids who were about six to eight years old, I guess. And on one of our jumps, we narrowly missed one of them. After we checked if he was okay, this is how it went. 
EK goes, yeah, I'm okay. Sorry about that, but is it alright if you guys use the playground too? We don't want to accidentally hurt one of you guys while we're here. Friend 1's like, we'll be done soon. Don't worry, we won't take too long. His group of friends and him seem to appear to accept this at first. As we go jumping, the kid comes back. Can I join you guys? Sorry, it's very dangerous and you could end up hurt. Besides, we're about finished here. Entitled Kid screams, I want to do that too. It's not fair. I'm going to get my dad to beat you up if you don't let me join you. Sorry, but we got to go now. On that, as I turned around, I felt a wet thud land on my leg. The boy had just spit a fat one at me. Friend 2 was like, hey, don't spit at people because things didn't work out the way you want it. It's a bad thing to do. Look, we gotta go and don't spit on people. We walk off to the drinking fountain at the entrance of the park, and as I'm waiting, I feel a large sharp pain in my back. The child had apparently not liked that we turned him down and latched his teeth into my back. My friend pried him off as he went, it pinched down my back hard and snapped off as my friend got him off. What? In that next moment, Entitled Mother had seen us pulling her kid off me and screamed at us. My friend checked my back to see if I was bleeding while this was happening. She's like, what are you doing to my kid? You're older kids. You shouldn't bully him. What's wrong with you? Your kid just ran up and bit my friend. There's no way he would do something like that. He's a well-behaved boy. Besides, he's only playing around. You should just let him do what he wants. I turned around and my friend lifted up my shirt to show the bite marks and a nice small trickle of blood. Well, if he did bite you, you probably did something to hurt him first. All I said is he couldn't play with us after he spit on me and then he jumped up and bit me. Control your kid. I was not being polite, I was ticked. Well, why not? Are you leaving him out of your games because he's younger? No wonder, you deserved that bite. Friend 2 points at the playground, specifically a bridge section to another bit. I'm not sure what it was called, but it was a longish jump we barely make. And it was clearly a jump probably three times more distance than the kid could make. And he's like, alright, so do you think he can jump from that spot to there? No, of course not, why would he? That's what we were doing. So we tell him he'd get hurt doing that. What are we going to... Entitled Mother cuts him off. What is wrong with you kids? Are you trying to break your face and teeth? This is no circus, this is a playground. What are you even doing at the park? You're too old to do stuff like this. Can you even do that? I bet you're just over-exaggerating so he couldn't play. Friend 1 casually walks over to the playground and makes the jumps, lifts himself up, and then hops off. Friend 1's like, there, happy now? We're leaving, bye bye. Learn to teach your kid not to bite people or spit on people if things aren't going his way. Entitled Mother's like, Well, my kid could make that jump too. Go play with him. He can beat all of you dumb craps at it. Completely forgetting her initial claims of her child not being able to make the jump and or breaking their face. I was about seething at this point from the whole situation. And I guess my friend noticed the look in my eyes and just grabbed me and just went, Let's go. We got dinner to grab. Entitled Mother as we walk off is screaming, You kids are animals and shouldn't be allowed here. You're a danger to every kid. Friend 1 flipped her off and kept holding it until we got out of eye range, while Friend 2 yelled, You're a dumb bitch who can't raise your kid. Honestly, it was outrageous, and at dinner, my friend's dad was treating us for he asked why I had tears in my eyes and looked ready to punch someone, and we told him the whole story and he just said, Yeah. There are some crazy people, but forget about it, now let's eat. Entitled Mom begs Bride to be less happy on her wedding day. So let's preface this by saying this is my mum's story, not mine. I don't know all the details because I know it's a painful memory and I don't want to make her relive it. The characters will be MM, my mum, Entitled Mom, EM, ES, Entitled Sister, and MD, my dad. My mom is the youngest of two girls. She and my dad went to high school together, but didn't start dating until they were both in college. It was a chance meeting that they ran into each other in a bar. Cute story. Still happily married and in love 23 years later. It all started when my mom got engaged. 
My auntie was so upset because she wasn't engaged first, even though she was older. Throughout all the planning, she was pouting and kind of cold towards my mom. So the day of the wedding comes. My mom is getting ready with her bridesmaids. She is marrying the guy that she had a crush on since high school. She has her perfect venue, and she's wearing her grandmother's, my great-grandmother's dress. Everything is going absolutely perfect until my auntie starts crying. My mum tried to comfort her because she is the most selfless woman in the world. Even though she was getting married in mere hours, she was focused on her sister. A little while later, after my auntie ran off, my grandmother pulled my mum aside. Like I said, I don't know every detail, but the conversation went something like this. Hmm, hey MM, you're really making ES upset. Confused, my mum says, what did I do? You're way too happy, and it's making her upset that she didn't get married before you. Pardon me? Can you just be a little less happy? My mom was in shock. This was supposed to be the happiest day of her life, and here was her mother telling her to be less happy so her sister didn't get butt hurt. My mom's whole life, she was always told to set her accomplishments aside so her sister felt special too. When she was younger, she was told by her parents she would never go to college because she had a hard time in school. Dyslexia and ADD before professional help was available. My mum defied all odds and graduated with a master's degree. Can you guess who got all the glory for graduating from college? You guessed it, my auntie. And on this day, my mum was not having it. Look, mum, I'm sorry that Entitled Sister is upset, but today is about me and my dad. MD, as in OP's dad, no incest here. We're happy, and I'm not going to hide that, or pretend I'm not, just so Entitled Sister won't be sad. Today is the happiest day of my life, and I'm not giving that up for anyone. My grandmother shut up after that. She did give my mother a disapproving look though. I don't even need to have to be there to see it. My mum still gets them all the time. After that, the wedding was perfect. My mother still talks about it with stars in her eyes. Now, my mother still has to deal with their crap sometimes, but she also has my dad and us kids, two of us are adults now, to help stand up for her. She is very happy, and I'm so glad she stood up for herself. There are a few stories like this that I know about, but this one makes me the saddest. I'm just glad that she didn't let it ruin her wedding day. Edit. I told my mum about all the support she got in this post, and how many upvotes it has, and she got so happy, joking that she was Reddit famous and was so overjoyed that everyone was so kind. Those families that cotton wool children at the expense of their siblings just baffle me. I'm so glad your mum had a wonderful day, and look, she got you out of it. Awesome. There is a reason for this. Parents are too cowardly, or too incompetent, or too lazy to deal with a tantruming sister. They spoiled it probably, they created it, and everyone else has to kowtow to it because the parents don't want to have to put up with it. Afterwards though, did this older pouting sister have a real meltdown of any sort? It was more like 23 years of meltdowns. Recently, she demanded that my grandmother spent Christmas with her and her kids, two years out of every three while my mum and family only get to have them over for Christmas once every three years. Oh my god, I had something happen at my wedding similar. Well, maybe not. It wasn't fancy, just something in the park. But my sister, who I asked to be my maid of honour, did nothing to help me plan this very easy, not so complicated wedding, showing up as a surprise at the last minute, and was so butthurt that I asked my other sister to walk me down. I have a really screwed up family, so didn't really invite anyone other than the two sisters. The sister who I asked to walk me down was so helpful and paid for a lot, even though I asked her not to and without anything in return. The older sister started crying and asking why she didn't get asked. I said because you told me you didn't know if you could make it. I'm not doing last minute changes, again. So she stayed for the ceremony, cried again and left. Oh, and she wore a white dress. I also told everyone to not post pics on social media until a few days later. She posted them during the reception on her way back home, with the caption, tried to surprise my sister and get treated like I'm not even there. 
didn't even get acknowledged for showing up. And our next post by F. Giorgio, entitled parents send their kids to play in front of my house. So I was reminded of this a few days ago by my mother. It happened in 2011. I lived on the ground floor in a residential neighborhood. Children generally play in the road and are noisy, but this is part of life. The thing is that in 2011, there were no kids in the neighborhood. There would either be babies and toddlers who were too young, or the younger kids were now teens, and they were too old for playing football or hide and seek in the road. One summer day, I start hearing this terrible rumble outside. It is hot and my window is open. So I look out and I see a bunch of kids between 9 and 13 years old, playing loudly outside my house. I had never seen these kids before. I asked them who they were and where they lived, and one of them told me they lived three blocks over. So I asked them if they had any friends here, and they refused. So I told them to leave, which they did. Like I said, I can't complain when local kids play. It is their right. About 10 minutes later, the kids return. I see them and tell them to leave and not to come back. They leave, only to return a few minutes later with their entitled mother. The entitled mother was in her late 30s, early 40s, with very short shorts and a Karen haircut, even though I didn't know it was called that at the time. She was demanding to know who told her kids to leave. I look out the window and respond, I did. Entitled mother immediately goes on a tirade. How dare I talk to her kids? How dare I order them to leave when she said they could play? On and on. I asked her where she lived, and she confirmed that they lived three blocks away. Why, TF, don't your little brats play there then? I ask. To receive the answer that, me and my husband work all week and are tired and need some rest. We can listen to the noise. I retort, I work too and am not obligated to listen to howling brats that don't even live here. She took offense to the word brats and threatened to sue me. I told her if you want to sue me, don't do it for calling her kids brats. I'd rather she sues me for insulting her, so frick off. She states that she will call the police, to which I answer, please do, I'll tell them how you abandoned your underage kids that were under your care. As you could guess, she didn't call the police. I never saw her or her monster kids again. Not a very exciting story, but it was my most memorable entitled parent moment so far. Lol, what's with all the dummies saying that you're in the wrong? The parents are responsible for their kids. I'd say freak off my lawn too. It must be all the Karens of Reddit. Roses are red and the sun rises at dawn. I live three blocks away, but let my kids play on your lawn. And our next story by Poe Jasko. Entitled mum thinks if my garage door is open, she and her bratty son can search for and take what they want. I've been lurking here and have been afraid to post because I'm awkward and don't know if my stories will be as well liked as everyone else's. So here goes. I am posting from my phone, so might be some mistakes. The stars are myself from about 16 years ago. I'm 28, so I was 14. Um, it's interesting maths. Entitled mother, my neighbor from across the street, a self-entitled mother, B5K, her five-year-old child who is obsessed over other people's stuff. Scene, garage. During the summer between seventh and eighth grade, my parents would go to work and leave me with a giant list of chores so overwhelming I wouldn't even try. Also, I live in Texas, so it would sometimes be too hot to try. One day, to avoid being crapped on, I decided I would attempt to do the chore, clean out the garage. My parents hoard crap and then get upset when they can't find what they want. And my stepfather just buys crap and doesn't even try to put it somewhere. So it's my job to organize the garage so that my mom can actually park her car. I'm moving stuff around for a few hours and I'm sweaty and hot and all it looked like I was really doing anyway was just removing the mess. I come across my tricycle from when I was younger. I put it outside and on the driveway so I can try and find a place for it later. I decide to take a break and go inside and fix some lunch. A couple minutes later, I hear rummaging in the garage and something break. I thought it was my cat. I look, and it was B5K. Sounds like a Star Wars droid name, searching through the place. 
and he was looking around like he just found good treasure. I'm like, hey B5K, where's your brother? He's grounded until Monday. Well, you should go home and play with him. What did you break? And B5K looks like he's going to cry. I'm like, listen, I don't play unless your brother is there too. Please go home. So I close the door, and I thought that was the end of it. I go back to my food and VH1 music videos. When I'm done, I go back outside, and I notice something is missing. The tricycle is gone. I knew who took it, B5K. So I get on my bike and ride it around the block. I catch up to B5K in almost no time at all. He tried to start pedaling faster, but it's a tricycle, so it's not like you can do that. I want everyone to know this. This was no plastic thing that leans back. This was made out of metal, and it looked almost like a very small bike. So anyway, I yell at the kid to stop. He starts crying and ignores me. I pedal up to him and get in front of him, and he rides into my bike and falls. I don't help him up, but I take my trike back. I put it inside the house and then go back outside to finish up in my garage. Now from across the street to the left, I hear B5K yelling to someone. I assumed it was his older sister, she was a year behind me, and didn't usually care about the stuff he complained about. So I expected her to come over here and just give me a little crap, playfully, and then go home. I go back to my chore, and then I feel someone prod me between the shoulder blades. I assumed this to be his sister, so I turned around ready for a pretty smile and a sarcastic chewing out. I was ill prepared for this, because it was entitled mother in all her rage. What did you steal from my son? Nothing. My son says you took something from him while he was playing. Where is it? I didn't give him a thing. He tried to steal a tricycle. Where is it? Not telling you. You could have killed my boy. I look at her very confused. He was only playing. Give him his tricycle back. His tricycle? He got it from my garage. Well, you're too old for it. Look, lady, I'm just trying to finish a job so that I don't have to worry about it. Please walk away. I pulled my Simon's flip phone out of my pocket and called my mom. Entitled mother promised to have my track back when my mother came home and picked up her little thief and left. Edit, thank you so much for my first post to ever reach a silver. Also, I did the correct maths. 28 takes 16 equals 12. I could, I swear I was 13 or 14, but I'm not sure now. I know that this happened when I was in middle school. Did she come back to speak with your mum? Did you speak to your mum about what happened? I truly don't understand how people are okay with their children taking stuff. I did. I called her. When my mum came home, she and Entitled Mother had a good talking. Thanks for the update and thanks for sharing. Now that's epic. How to Raise a Thief 101 Teach your child that it's alright to steal someone's property if they're too old for it. Facepalm, you're right, those are the worst kinds of thief. And our next story, Princess Cheetos 77. Three entitled mothers send their kids over for food because I have too much. Backstory number one, I have a working pantry, which means I have food that will last my family up to three months. It is food that we eat and use, so I'm constantly restocking and rotating it. I'm not exactly a prepper, but it does come in handy for emergencies. Backstory number two, I've been in self-quarantine for a few weeks now, due to my compromised immune system. No one outside of our family is allowed inside the house, and we don't answer the door if we don't have to. We also have a ring doorbell so that we can communicate with people without answering the door. Backstory 3. I used a coupon to that point that I could have been on the extreme couponing show. That's how I built up my food storage quickly. In the past, the neighborhood kids learned quickly that my son had lots of snacks that I was willing to share. In turn, their parents learned that I had a very large food storage, which I never wanted to advertise, but oh well. I didn't think it would be a problem at the time. Yeah, I was dumb. I no longer coupon with the same intensity due to my declining health, but I do smaller trips, an extra can or two each grocery order, to maintain my food storage that is. Sorry for the novel, on to the story. Our city is in the first few days of quarantine, 
Schools and workplaces have been closed, but our grocery stores are still open, albeit wiped out and overwhelmed. Yesterday, the doorbell rang at about 9.30 a.m. I checked the Ring app and saw a neighbor's kid, about five years old, standing on my porch. So I pressed the talk button and tell him, hi. Hi, he said, I'm here for the food. Confused, I asked, what food? Mommy said you had food for me, he replied. I'm sorry, honey, but I don't. I'm sure your mom has food for you at home. Okay, bye. He waved into the camera and left. I brushed it off because that kid was known for making stuff up. So I settled back into bed. Almost a half an hour later, the doorbell rings again. And when I check it, there are two kids standing there. Oh no, now there's two of them. One is the kid of my neighbors across the street. The other lives on the street behind me. When I greet them through the Ring app, it's the same story. Their mums told them I had food to give them. I quickly told them no and to go and talk to their mums. They said okay and went on their way. While they walked away, I sent off a text to the three mums. Your kids stopped by my house saying that you told them I have food for them. I don't. Why are you telling them that? What about all the food in your food storage? What about it? You have a lot you can share? You've shared before. My food storage is enough for my family. If I had anything to spare, I would gladly share, but I don't. But you have lots of food. Again, for my family. The stores are still open. If you need food, you'll have to try your luck there. Or we could just come over and take your stuff. Yeah, I doubt you could stop us. All three know about my health and mobility issues. Try it, and I'll meet you on my driveway with my shotgun an angry Rottweiler, and my even angrier husband. Are you threatening us? <laughs> no, 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 that was just a really nice thing to say. You threatened to steal my property, so I'm just returning the favor. Bia? Oh no, you called me a bad word. I think I'm gonna cry. I better drown my sadness by eating all of these yummy snacks I have in my food storage, lol. They didn't respond back. But I did hear from one of my other neighbors that Entitled Mother 1 was complaining to anyone that would listen that I'm a mean person for letting kids go hungry. Several people asked her why she was trying to take food away from an ill person. I have several chronic illnesses as well that have me more or less homebound. When she bulk buys at Costco every two weeks, she didn't have an answer for that and stopped complaining about me soon afterwards. She did end up going to the store to buy stuff, but was super ticked because the lines were super long and she was there for about an hour. When people send you threats like that, you should thank them for putting it in writing. Yeah, could have called the police on them. Police got involved in her new update. What? All right, I'm gonna find this update, boys. Update, three entitled mothers send their kids over for food because I have too much. Original post here. Also, thank you for the kind souls for the gold. You are awesome, thanks. Wow, my original post really blew up. Thanks to everyone for their advice and concern. I really thought that there wouldn't be more to the story, but there is. For those of you who are wondering, we live in the western region of the United States near the Rocky Mountains. That's all I'm willing to say. Preppers and people with food storage like mine are pretty much the norm where we are but there are people like the three entitled mothers that don't prepare beyond their monthly grocery trips. It's just assumed that everyone here has some sort of food storage, but as a rule, we don't ask or talk about them. After my encounter with the entitled mothers on Friday, I didn't think much of it, but I did tell my husband. He was not amused. In my post about the entitled grandma that tried to take our movie seats, I mentioned that since my health has been declining, my husband has become fiercely protective of me. He wanted to storm over and rip into all three of them, but I managed to convince him not to. He did ask for screenshots of the texts, just in case. I happily sent them to him. Saturday night, after I went to bed early, the neighbor who had told me that Entitled Mother 1 had been complaining about me, we'll call her NN for nice neighbor, showed up on our porch with neighbor cop NC and spoke through the screen door to my husband. Nice neighbor said that she and several other neighbors were concerned when Entitled Mother 2 had basically admitted to threatening to come and take our food storage. 
I guess Entitled Mother 2 was telling people that like it was a funny story or something? Nice Cop was there because he co-heads our neighborhood watch and is also Entitled Mother 2's brother-in-law. I've always gotten the impression that he and Entitled Mother 2 don't get along. Quick note, we have several police officers as well as firemen that live in our neighborhood. In fact, I have three different policemen living on just my street. NC asked Hubby if we had proof of the text conversation and Hubby sent him a copy. NC thanked him and told him he'd be speaking with his sister-in-law later that night. Hubby thanked them both and they left. This morning on Sunday, Nice Cop showed up again. He told Hubby that he'd met up with the Entitled Mothers and their husband, and sternly told them that with the screenshots Hubby had given him, he could arrest the three of them for harassing and threatening me, and that if anything happens at our house, that they would be the first on their list of people to talk to and or arrest. I don't know if he just told them that to scare them, but he knows the law better than me, so I'll go with it. He also told them that he had informed the other cops that live in the neighborhood and that they, as well as the neighbors that were concerned in the first place, would also be watching them and to not be stupid. So that's it, for now. Nice Cop told us to call him if we had any problems with anyone, but I don't anticipate anything soon. Nice Cop admitted to Hubby that all three entitled mothers looked terrified after he mentioned being arrested, and their husbands were furious at them. Entitled Mother 1's husband even asked her, how could you think that it was okay to threaten a sick person? Entitled Mother 2's husband told her she was dumb for threatening someone who owned a shotgun. I'll update if anything else happens. These Entitled Mothers are just downright dumb. OP's food equals mine because I'm dumb and sharing is caring still applies. My mummy says that sharing is caring but it only applies to people who are in need for me to share with them. And in communist- da, 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 da. And then there's just a whole bunch of Russian comments under that. Oh, I love- <laughs> I mean, I don't love communism. Let's, let's not go there, boys. Chromos says, She won't let me see my kids because of COVID-19. My ex-wife has decided that I should no longer see the kids due to the outbreak. We currently have 50-50 custody. My job is doing shifts, one week in, one week from home. I currently take transit into work. She will not let me see the kids unless I'm only working from home. This goes directly against our separation agreement. Should I be contacting the police to resolve this? Am I the entitled parent not taking this virus seriously? Our normal schedule is a 2-2-5. I am proposing a swap every week. She is proposing that I can see the kids in public every day wearing a mask and I'm not allowed to touch them, and she will watch them from a distance. You might want to get some real legal advice on this one and some real healthcare advice. If your ex is at home and you're not, it's likely safer to them to stay with her, barring any extenuating circumstances that might make her home unsafe. And until this is resolved, the custody slash pandemic thing, whichever is first, Try to FaceTime with them every day, OP. You can still be in their life during this time. And uh, this guy is from Ontario, Canada, because he posted in the legal advice for that one. So, I mean, what would you guys do in this situation? Personally, he's working with the public. I think it's a risk to the kids. I think there's special statutes or whatever, special circumstances being made across the world right now because of the pandemic situation. I guess, you know, it, it is breaking the custody agreement, but a whole bunch of stuff is being broken right now because of it. What is your opinion on that? I want to know what you guys would do if you're in this situation. Because I, I imagine that a lot of people would be, even people listening to this. What are you doing because of this outbreak? Spider-Man is racist. So this happened during the Halloween of 2018. My parents were going on a date because Halloween just so happens to be their anniversary. I am 17 and my little brother is 8. We had been watching the Marvel Comic Universe together and he absolutely loves the movies. He was so excited to dress up in his new Spider-Man costume and to go trick-or-treating. I didn't want to go because I'm a bit old for trick-or-treating, at least in my mind. But our folks were out and they told they'd pay me $100 to look after him and take him trick-or-treating for the night. I agreed to do so. The trouble happens about a half hour after we walk out the door. 
Our cast are me, little bro, racist entitled mother, entitled mother's kid. Now, it's probably important to the story to point out that my brother and I are African Americans. You'll see why. So we had been walking for about a half hour and we were having a great time. I obviously would have rather stay home, but seeing my brother so happy with his bag of candy was heartwarming. As we were walking up the street, a mother and her son dressed as Darth Vader, who were white, were walking right by us. The mother stopped in front of us and said, um, don't you think your little brother should have picked a different costume? Okay, why is that, ma'am? Well, see, he's dressed as Spider-Man, but Spider-Man's white. He isn't white. So why is he dressed as Spider-Man? I am still keeping my cool. My brother doesn't seem to be understanding the situation. He's still bouncing around and excited to get more candy. I'm like, excuse me? My little brother can wear whatever he wants. It's a free country. I know, but Spider-Man is white and your brother is, you know, that's a bit racist. I mean, there are several black superheroes out there that could have chosen from. In fact, me and my kid just saw Black Panther together and it was amazing. You should be Black Panther, little man. You look just, oh, that's terrible. Don't say that. Now I start to raise my voice and my brother stops bouncing. What's racist is you telling my little brother that he can't dress as Spider-Man because it makes you uncomfortable. Entitled mother was baffled that I raised my voice at her and her son started crying. Oh, look what you did. You made my baby cry. Okay, I'm not gonna say that one. Now, I don't know what she was implying by the term you people, but she, to me, it sounded very much like an ethnic slur and I was not okay with this at all. If you and your kid don't leave right now, I will call the police for harassment and hate speech. Get out now. Oh, don't you think you've gotten away with this? Entitled mother grabs her kid and walks away in a storm of huffs and grunts. I bend down to my brother's level to make sure that he was okay. He told me that he was okay, and his smile came back almost immediately. We spent the next 10 to 15 minutes trick-or-treating without any incidents. The rest of the night was very peaceful. When I told my parents about this situation, they were shocked. They managed to find Entitled Mother's address, considering that she lived fairly close to us, and pressed charges for public harassment and hate speech. We haven't heard from them to this day. Recap, Entitled Mother thinks it's racist for my African-American brother to be dressed as Spider-Man. Miles Morales is black, so shut up, Karen. This tramp is thinking of Peter Parker. There are multiple different types of Spider-Man in the comics. Don't tell her of the Marvel multiverse. Karen might explode. Her head will before she can. And if Karen learns about the Spider-Verse, we'd end up with a comic about the Karen-verse, or a real-life Karen-verse, which would be much worse because we already have enough Karens for one Earth. Manager bans Karen. Karen's like, this is a Karen's level threat. <laughs> Call all units right now. Entitled parent doesn't agree with lunch breaks during the coronavirus. Obligatory, not my experience, but a friend's. My best friend works in a pharmacy, and during this whole crisis, her hours have gone through the roof. She has been working non-stop, as have her workers, and I am so proud of her. To deal with the fact that she is now working 60 to 70 hours plus, the store has been shutting for an hour's lunch break. They have put signs up telling people about the changes, but no one ever seems to read them. So they had a worker stand outside the front of the shop, to politely inform customers that they were closed. Enter the entitled parent. She began asking why they were shut, which is fair enough, and when the worker went on to explain that there was now an obligatory lunch break due to the huge increase in hours because of the virus, she went deadly serious and started ranting about how she was a single mum and how she does way more hours than that. Keep in mind, deadly virus, having a go at a pharmacy worker, a key worker during a pandemic. Look, I get that being a single mum is a hard job. My mum is one, so I have seen it done. But this is not the time to be complaining at these workers, mate. You have to tell people like that, it is illegal for employees not to have a lunch break. I used to get crap all the time in retail. How dare you take a break? How dare you be hungry? Or God forbid need to take a pee. So, so, you know, somehow I don't think she'd care. 
Look, guys, no wonder she's a single mom. I hope it means her ex-husband slash baby daddy, because they might not have been married, has some proper sense, and gets to have a hand in raising the kids equally as much as she does, so maybe they won't turn out so bad. On the bright side, sometimes a parent is so bad that they become a glaring example of how not to behave. Totally bringing up a random example, not at all from personal experience, of how a narcissistic parent bragged about every little thing to anyone's ears, made their child acutely aware that bragging is a huge turnoff. Just a wild guess, not at all backed by direct experience. And our next post. Entitled Dad Tries to Take Me Out of the Competition That Will Make My Career. This is a billiards pool, not a swimming pool for your information. Apart from that, enjoy the story. So, you won't, but if you remember me, I made it a post about an entitled mother trying to kick me from my pool team for assaulting her son. This time, an entitled dad tries to kick me out of the tournament I'm about to win for not letting his daughter win. I'm so selfish. Mind you, this is a big competition with professionals competing. I'm in the junior competition, but whoever wins gets to go to the best team in the whole of our city. It is a big deal. Our cast are me, M, shy but very proud mum, entitled daughter, entitled dad, same entitled mother as before, not an entitled daughter or dad's family though, the pool manager, same guy as before but he got an upgrade, security guard. So let's begin. I'm at this competition, very nervous because I'm 12, and there is people 20 plus years older than me here, and less obviously. I win my first game like a breeze, and second, so on so forth. Then I play Entitled Daughter. Not gonna lie, she's not that bad. I win, barely, and move on to play even harder opponents, and again, barely win. But at that moment, I see Entitled Mother at the corner of my eye with her son who got moved to a new pool team. So I go to the PM as he remembers her and it goes like this. Hey PM, Entitled Mother seems to be back. Didn't you ban her? Yes, I did actually. Let me go speak to them. So I continue to play my game. Then, you can't kick me out because of that little brat. You don't even run the place. Everyone starts to look and pauses their game. Ma'am, I do run the place, now please leave. I see my old teammate and say, well, I guess I'm in for it again. Entitled Dad starts to walk over to PM with Entitled Daughter. Now, I taught to the pool manager what an Entitled Parent was, so he's always prepared. And Entitled Dad's like, why are you kicking her out? You should kick him out, me. He didn't even let my daughter win. I didn't let her win because it would have ruined my career, literally ruined it forever. He didn't let her win because he needed that win. So did she. I can't do anything about that, sorry. How rude. I bet you his mum's a brat too. And I say, look, I'm sorry woman, do not speak about my mum like that ever again. Um, how dare you speak to your elders like that? At this point, security guard pulls a gun out, I mean, caught wind of the situation. Entitled mother and entitled dad say, inaudible screaming, inaudible screaming. It's really weird to be saying that, hey. Security guard comes over and tells them that both to get out, and surprisingly they just leave. Entitled daughter's like, what a stinking loser. Not even letting me win. Screw you guys, I'm going home. The manager comes over and, like before, asks if I'm okay, and I'm like, <laughs> yes. By the way, I came in second in the competition at the end and got into one of the best teams. I'm just happy I beat my old teammate, who was the old entitled kid, the entitled daughter. I got to see entitled dad and entitled mother get kicked out, and I got into a really good team. So it was a good day, guys. And our next post, babies, by Suretian. Entitled parent wants to force me to be her daughter's boyfriend. Caster, me, entitled mother, entitled mother's child. I know who the child is, as she went to my school. I found out she had a crush on me, and eventually she asked me out. I wasn't interested, so I politely declined, and we were all good. Until entitled mother tracks my number and calls me. I answer the phone and I say, how can I help you, Mrs. C's last name? She is furious, blasting me on the phone, 
telling me I don't deserve a girlfriend like her, and that I should be glad she asked me out, as men only want sex. I simply hung up on the call. She texted me saying she was going to report me to the police for sexual assault, and I simply ignored her. Unfortunately, this is not the end of it. She calls 911 and reports me for taking advantage of her daughter. I never knew about this until multiple police cars arrived at my parents' house. I was so confused. Where had she gotten this information from? I didn't think that she was actually going to claim that. I had to spend two hours explaining to the cops how this was not true and entitled mother was lying. Eventually, they figured it out after I showed the police to the text messages, and in court, entitled mother was charged for misuse of emergency services. She was sentenced to six months in prison and received a $5,750 fine. Christ the night! It's almost like these stories are fake. But hey, it's probably real, but uh, you'd probably see it on the news. But uh, It sounds like a very crazy issue, that one. Anyway, next story. Entitled mother demands that a sick person is moved out of a hospital unit. Alright, first let me say that this isn't my story. I'm a medical student, and one of my professors and I are doing a research together. So we have a very close relationship. I actually have a master's, and this professor was actually my advisor during it. She just sent me this story through text, and I can't believe some people's cruelty. For context, we're in the middle of a very complicated time for health workers, especially MDs and nurses. My professor is an MD and is currently on the front lines of the infection. In my country, we had a few hospital units selected to only treat cases of respiratory problems, and she's one of the MDs on one of those particular units. This happened last night, and while this unit's purpose is to diagnose and test cases of COVID-19, most of the cases appearing were usually common colds, flus, or allergies. We expected that, since people always rush to those places when they get cold-like symptoms these days, and as you realized, the place was packed. However, a patient who had come in some time before and had symptoms that matched COVID-19 was awaiting for the result of his exam. He was seated on a separate room and had a mask on, as the precautions by the World Health Organization dictate. Let's make it clear that he wasn't in the same room as everyone else. After some time, the exam was ready and it came back positive. However, the team is prepared for that. His symptoms weren't acute, so he wouldn't need to be intubated, but he needed to be admitted as he did have major shortness of breath. Also, since there was a patient who had tested positive, by law of the state we're in, we have to warn every member of the waiting room, regardless if the patient was there or not. Thus began the horror. Dun dun dun. While some people were apprehensive, they understood that they had not had contact with this patient. However, one woman didn't. This middle-aged woman got on her feet, pulled a kid by the arm, her child, and went to the counter letting fumes out of her nostrils. <laughs> I want a refund! She started to have an argument with the nurses, saying that it was irresponsible to leave that person there, that this person was going to make them all sick and die, that her child couldn't get sick because she had a weak immune system and demanded that the COVID patient was kicked out of that unit. Now, I'm not aware of every bit she said, but it was around those lines. However, please remember that this unit was converted especially to treat COVID patients. Media says all the time that if you're sick, but you don't think it's COVID, you should go to the regular units. Otherwise, you should call a COVID line and they will tell you where to go. This woman clearly wasn't there because of an infection and was demanding a sick patient who needed a supplementary oxygen to be kicked out of the hospital for the sake of her child. Oh well, that just made me lose a bit of my faith in humanity. My professor was the one who called the authorities and had the woman removed. Also, I asked her if it was okay to post here, and she allowed it. Cheers, guys. And I can't not read Very Very Texan's comments. I'd love it if you watched my videos, not gonna lie. He says, sadly, that is the secondary epidemic of the moment, losing faith in humanity. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's true. At least we're seeing local businesses and even some large chains doing what they can do to help. I wish that were true here. 
The small town stores are doing what they can, but the big boys seem to be gauging on what they can bring in. Four sticks of butter for $6? Two weeks ago, it was half that. Very Texan, why are you buying four sticks of butter? Come on, buddy, we're shaping up this time round the, the crisis. This is not a time to be eating four sticks of butter. And our next post by Chipper Dolly, titled, Entitled Dad Tries to Bully Me at the Comic Shop. Coworker is not having it. Allow me to set the scene. This all happened when I was 17 to 18 years old, when I was working at a comics and collectibles store in my small town. We were a very tightly knit store, family, and about 80% of the customers we would see in a regular day were our regulars. On this day in question, my coworker, we'll get to him later, was taking his well-deserved lunch in the back room, away from the main store. Although I was pretty new at the time, I was fine handling the store by myself for an hour or so, and it was a slow day a few weeks after Christmas. Enter Entitled Dad, with his unfortunate 5-6 to six year old son in tow. Entitled Dad is extremely well dressed, visibly wealthy, and barely even glances at me as he walks up to the register. I don't recognize him, which means he is not a regular. As he comes in, he's holding the box for a mid-range Transformers some assembly required figurine. The boxes open at one end and the frame that holds the punch out pieces are sticking out of the top, along with some of the plastic packaging and directions. I can hear loose pieces rattling around inside. He unceremoniously drops the box on the counter and says, we need to exchange this for another one. Now, if you know anything about small businesses, especially ones that sell collectibles, you'll know that the return and exchange policies are a pretty much non-existent. We just don't have the profit cushion to make up for it. However, my boss is a softy, and for regulars, or in cases of broken merchandise, he sometimes makes an exception. Tentatively, I tell Entitled Dad that we don't usually do returns or exchanges, but I ask if there was a problem with the toy, and I ask if he has his receipt. Entitled Dad is already on the verge of snapping. My son and I couldn't put it together. Listen to me. I'm not asking you for a refund. We're go just going to exchange it for another one. All the pieces are there. I shouldn't have to keep every receipt. I bought it here. You clearly sell these toys. And he immediately hauls his poor kid over to the shelves where we display our Transformers. Now, I don't believe it for a second that all of the pieces are in that box especially since it looks like they stuffed it all back in without even trying to make it fit. I'm a non-confrontational type of person, and my anxiety was already bad enough at this point, so I realize I am not equipped to handle this entitled dad. So I go to get my co-worker, who we'll call D. D is the kind of person that you picture when you think of don't mess with me kind of energy. He used to be a tattoo artist. He's covered in ink and piercings, always wearing band tees has a dark beard, tall and fit, etc. He carries a stainless steel cane for some leg issues, but in his hands, that cane looks like a weapon. However, he was always extremely kind and professional, up until the exact second that you piss him off. Even I'm a little bit afraid of the D, to be honest. I peek into the back room, already feeling terrible for interrupting D's lunch and tell him I need his help with a customer who is demanding to return a toy. He heads back out into the main store area with me, and I see his expression go sour the moment he spots the busted open box sitting on our counter. D turns to the entitled dad and asks, so, you wanting to return the toy, is that right? Entitled dad absolutely flips his crap. No, I am exchanging it for another toy, because I bought it here and my son can't put his Christmas present together. He rounds on me. What did you tell him? I told you it was an exchange. D cuts him off, steadily approaching rage mode. Sir, I can't put this back on the shelf. It's open, the box is bent, and we don't sell used merchandise. We don't offer returns or exchanges. It said so on your receipt when you bought it. Entitled Dad is shouting even louder now. This is ridiculous. I bought it here. Just put it back in the box then. All the pieces are there. If I can't even figure it out, it's probably defective. D is not having it. 
He says, you expect me to accept that this is on your word, that all the pieces are there, then sell it to another customer with half the pieces broken out already? This toy is for ages 12 and up, and if you can't figure out how to put it together, that is not my problem. If you want a new toy, you're going to have to pay for it. Otherwise, you need to leave. I'm practically blacked out from fear of confrontation at this point. I don't remember the particular of the rest of this shouting match, but I do remember making eye contact with Entitled Dad's poor kid, who looked absolutely humiliated by his dad's behavior. In the end, D makes it incredibly clear that he's not going to accept Entitled Dad's busted up toy, and that Entitled Dad needs to leave or we will call the police. Fuming, Entitled Dad snatches the box back and drags his kid away, all the while threatening us with a better business bureau. Bad online reviews, I'm never shopping here again! <laughs> Still fuming himself, D looks over and asks if I'm all right, so I nod. If that jerk comes back here, you come get me, okay? I nod again, and D disappears into the back room to finish his lunch. And no, Entitled Dad did not come back. And our next post by user Pumpkin Pav. Entitled Mother demands I stop talking to her children, gets mad when I obey, and then expects me to watch her kids. Okay, I should preface this by saying this happened about 12 years ago now. I had mostly forgotten about this incident until I read a story about Christian entitled parents and went, oh hey, I knew some of those. This takes place a few months after I had started going to a new church, after my grandmother, who I was living with, got a flyer for a vacation Bible study the church was doing. I had enjoyed it and ended up going back every Sunday morning and Wednesday night. We were new to the area and didn't have a church to go to yet, so finding one I enjoyed was a blessing. I was one of the older kids there, at 11, and there was only one other kid my exact age there, and he usually only showed up every two weeks or so. There was this one girl, however, that got really attached to me. She was a few years younger, and her brother was just a year older than her. He wasn't nearly as attached, but still liked to get me to play with them, and these kids were actually the pastor's kids. At the time, I was really, really into Yu-Gi-Oh, and my grandmother had just bought me some cards, and I was ecstatic. I was talking about it to anyone that would willingly listen to me, and that meant bringing up my cards to the church and talking about it with people there. This included the little girl, but oh boy had talking to her about it been a huge mistake. Once the services were over and everyone was getting ready to leave, the pastor's wife comes to me and asks me to come talk to her in another room. I follow her, thinking maybe she had something for me. We weren't exactly well off, so it wouldn't be the first time I left with more than I had arrived with. Anyway, I get to this room and inside already are the pastor's mother and another woman from the church whose name I can't remember. So I'm going to call her Nancy because she reminded me of a Nancy. Nancy was my hero in this situation. And in the comments, Grandma Nancy's my hero. The pastor's wife sits down in front of me and begins to tell me that she doesn't like the way I was talking to her daughter. I'm very much confused at this point because I definitely wasn't being mean or saying bad words or anything. She then continues on to tell me that I should not be talking to her daughter about demons and the occult, and that's when it draws on me that she is talking about my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. My throat felt tight at that point, and I was trying so hard to not start crying right there and then, because I couldn't begin to understand why I was getting berated over talking about my cards, and I try to explain that it's just a game and show that I like. She tells me she knows that, but it's still completely unacceptable and she doesn't want me talking to her kids ever again. Ever. Not just about the cards, about anything. And then she tells me I can go. So I rush out of there to the van that brought me there. I go home and completely bawl my eyes out. The thing was, this was about the time my anxiety really got the better of me, even if I didn't know that's what it was back then. Just the thought that I was going to be in trouble with my grandmother and her husband was enough to send me into a full-blown panic attack and lock myself in my room. I ended up skipping the next Sunday school by pretending to be sick. Nancy and her husband actually showed up at my home the day after I missed. They asked that I don't take anything the pastor and his wife say too seriously. 
that because they're well off and send their kids to a good Catholic school that they could be a bit uppity. They told me they hoped I would continue coming to the church because they loved having me and that made me feel a little bit better. And I did enjoy going to that church. So next Wednesday evening rolls round. The van shows up and I go to church again. I wish I hadn't. I get there and the church service proceeds as normal, but we stay behind a little longer to make Christmas decorations before we leave. The kids keep trying to talk to me and I try to ignore them. The boy, once realizing I wasn't going to play with him, like usual, goes to play somewhere else. The girl, however, does not. As I said before, she had been quite attached to me and kept trying to get me to talk to her. I was afraid of getting in trouble again, so I crack and tell her that I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to talk to her anymore. She looked confused and hurt, which in turn made me hurt. She was a sweet kid, but I shouldn't have even said that because her mother was coming storming over, scolding me for ignoring her kid, and I'm just so, so confused. She had literally told me the week before that she didn't want me talking to her kids at all. She then tells me that because I was so rude, I could take her kids into the playroom and watch them while the adults cleaned up the tables and leftover supplies, and I'm just standing there dumbfounded and trying hard not to cry. God, where are the full stops in these sentences, man? She tells me to go on then, but before I can say anything, Nancy swoops in to save me. She tells the pastor's wife that, actually, she had gotten a phone call from my grandmother and that I needed to get home right away. She tries to argue that the van can't leave until they're done cleaning up, and Nancy tells her that's okay because she'll be taking me home. I start crying as soon as we get into the car, and Nancy, the sweetheart she was, stopped at a gas station and bought me a cocoa and a donut to try and make me feel better, so I was a little less blubbery by the time that I got home. In the end, I was too afraid to ever go back to that church. The next time the van came around to pick me up, my grandmother had to go out and let the drivers, who were also very good people, know that I wasn't coming this time or ever again, while I hid under my covers, too ashamed to face them myself. I spent a long time thinking it was my fault, that what I had done was inherently wrong. I even ended up giving my cards to a friend because I couldn't look at them without wanting to throw up. Sorry this got kinda long. This is the first time I've told anyone outside of my grandmother about this situation. Obviously, looking back now, I know I was no way in the wrong, and the pastor's wife in no way made sense the way she treated me. Wow, that is insane. I am so sorry that this person was abused like that. My god, why are people so cruel in this world? And now, ladies and gentlemen, on to our next post. By user a mini boygar. My parents ruined my chances of having a normal life. Long story, I'm very frustrated and I've never posted in this sub before. Forgive any formatting issues, I'm on mobile. So I'm 22 female. My parents are extremely religious and homeschooled all six of my siblings and I right from kindergarten to grade 12. We had joined a homeschool group for a bit when I was around five to six, but one of the dads told my dad that we should go to more events and that offended my dad because, how dare someone else tell me what to do with my family? And that was the end of it. So from around six years old to the age of 12, the only friends I had were my siblings and eventually my nieces and nephews. It was hard. My youngest brother is my dad's favorite child, favorite person and favorite companion. Nothing anyone else ever does can compare to my 21 year old brother who still lives and home and never went to school after high school. He's the exception to every rule my other siblings and I were forced to comply to. He was also always bigger than me, since I'm pretty small, and was borderline abusive towards me if I threatened his good standing with my dad, to the point where if my boyfriend puts his hands up to stroke my face, I automatically flinch away. It's hard to see my boyfriend look so sad when he just wanted to touch me in an innocent way, and I flinched as if he were going to hit me. My dad never stopped my brother from hitting me, he never stopped him from twisting my arms behind my back to the point where one of my shoulders got dislocated and I had to go to the hospital. He never stopped him from taking advantage of me and my nieces multiple times for years. He never stopped him. Jesus Christ. Now, I had the unfortunate lot of being born a female. 
As you can guess, women aren't as valuable in their religion as men are, and my parents had four daughters and only three sons. My dad firmly believed that my schooling only needed to go as far as basic math, basic English, and some anatomy. I still don't know math very well, because once I turned 12, I had to take over my mum's job of cooking, cleaning, organising, helping my brothers with schooling, and helping my sisters with their kids. I was, however, allowed to join cadets when I was 13. I smudged the truth about what we were doing so that I would be allowed to stay and make some friends. If my dad knew that I would be teaching males, he would have fought with the commanding officer and pulled me out. So from 12 to 19, the only social thing I was able to do was cadets. That's where I met my best friend, all my close friends, and my now boyfriend. Life was pretty good for a while. My brother was occupied so he couldn't hurt me. I had friends, and I had learned how to stay on my dad's good side. It all goes sideways when I turn about 17. I wanted to apply for college, and my dad said he wouldn't let me graduate until I th did my three book reports on books that he chose. I didn't agree with the books he chose, because I felt like he was making me read books on a woman's place, and why I should just be a wife and a mother. He threw the book at me, and it hit me. I left to live with my sister. He got really mad, and wouldn't want to talk to me. Eventually, with my mother's promoting, I was allowed to move back home, and I started college. I just graduated back in December, and moved 37 and a half hours across the country to another province with my boyfriend, but my family doesn't know that. I've been trying to apply for a new driver's license, a new health insurance card, and a new passport. I can't get any of them because my dad threw out my fudging birth certificate when I refused to write his book reports. He was so angry at me for not writing a report that he threw out the one piece of paper that I needed to start my life. I can't get coverage unless I have my birth certificate, and now I need to apply for a new one but I really don't think my parents are going to give me the information I need to fill it out. So now I'm stuck, in a new province, basically alone, besides my boyfriend, and I have no safety at all. I can't drive, I can't go to the clinic if I get sick, I can't travel, and I can't even apply for the one thing that would fix all this, because my parents won't give me what I need. I just feel gypped out of a life that should have been somewhat normal, and now I have so much to deal with from them. I don't even know if this is the right sub to post this in, I just need to word vomit my frustration at this whole freaking ordeal. Edit, I calmed down after talking to my boyfriend, and we applied for a new birth certificate together. So now I will hopefully have one on the way soon, and be able to start my life properly. Thank you everyone for your kind words and offers of advice, it really helped. You're great people. Entitled Mother asks me to stop dancing all over her son. Okay guys, so this happened a few years ago. My friend and I bought tickets to a concert featuring a lot of cool artists. We couldn't believe that it was only $35. Mind you, the main artist is a former child star from Disney, and the concert was full of young teens, and a lot of them were with their parents. Kind of lame we thought, but okay. We were determined to enjoy the concert. Fast forward, after all opening acts were over, the child star comes out, and it's actually quite exciting. She sings pop songs, <laughs> big surprise, and a lot of them are big hits. We were having fun and dancing and letting our inner teen out. It was a great time. Then comes Entitled Mother, taps me on the shoulder, and asks me to stop dancing all over her son. Mind you that the kid was a 12-year-old that had obviously not stepped a single toe into puberty yet. He just seemed confused. I was in a foreign country, English is my second language, I couldn't even think of what to say so I just said, sorry, I didn't see him. I told my friend what happened then and there, and she was super protective, so she grabbed me and put me on the other side of her. Now she's next to Entitled Mother's Kid. We carried on like nothing had happened and kept on dancing. Mind you, we weren't swinging our arms profusely or twerking or anything that could either hit people around us or be considered inappropriate for a children's concert. Entitled Mother started tramping at my friend, this time being passive aggressive and rude to her son. She was so fudging bothered that we were having a good time that she was taking it out on the poor kid. 
She kept saying, careful not to let them touch you, super loud, almost in our ears, all while grabbing him aggressively to move him a bit. She finally confronted us again, but this time she was talking to my friend. Now, my friend's English was way better than mine, and she's not a people pleaser like me. She went on to say that we weren't touching Entitled Mother's son, and we weren't doing anything wrong. Entitled Mother asked us to move, and my friend said we weren't moving. Entitled Mother proceeded to say, if you don't move, I'll knock you over. My friend and I went to find security, because at this point, Entitled Mother threatened us and wasn't leaving us alone. We then walked the security guard to Entitled Mother and her kid, and she talked to him. We couldn't hear anything because, well, it was a concert and it was loud as hell, which makes the whole confrontation from earlier even more cringy. And then the security guard asked my friend and I to move. When I looked at Entitled Mother, she had a gross smirk on her face. That was the end of it. It wasn't a happy ending with Entitled Mother getting what she deserved, but I'm sure she will if she keeps up with that attitude. Screw you, Entitled Mother from Hell. I hope your son grows up to be better than you. How dare you have fun around my child? This is unacceptable! Why the frick do you sound like Lemon Grab from Adventure Time right now? Probably because that's something he says. <laughs> How dare you dance at a concert? If that kid remembers what happened there and he has good friends or a good teacher, he might make the entitled mother embarrass herself when he grows up. Small consolation, but you were probably asked to move because she was a Karen and he didn't feel like fighting her. Dragging out two older folks is easier than dragging out Karen and her squealing kid. Next time, let her assault you first and make sure other people see it. That's what I thought too. I 100% would let her assault me just so she would be the one getting kicked out. No way I would have went to security first if someone said they're going to knock me over. I would have just let them try and let them be the ones getting kicked out. Can't stand entitled people. And OP says, I was a 22 year old in an exchange program in the US. It's weird to explain how I was scared of any confrontation with any American. I lived there for two years and now live in Canada. And just being more accustomed to North America ways made me less scared. I wish I could go back in time and stand up for my 22 year old self. And our next post by Deoxy Nucleus. Entitled mother doesn't understand personal space. So this happened two years ago, but for some reason, I was just thinking of it because I'm bored of doing nothing and decided to post on Reddit. Too true. Our cast are Entitled Kid, Entitled Dad, Friend, and me. I was at my local swimming pool and me and my friends were having a blast doing the usual racing, water basketball, water slides, etc. You know, the shrimp kebab, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, you can saute it. Sorry, I just wanted to put that in there. After it, we had some pizza. And we headed into the changing rooms. As we went in, two of my friends went to the bathroom, and the other one stayed with me, and we got changed on the opposite sides of the locker. As I was taking off my shirt, this annoying little entitled kid comes up to me and stands up on the bench next to me. And I kid you not, just started doing a Fortnite dance. Can't remember which one. Don't worry, buddy, we don't need to know. Then he says in the most annoying voice possible, Are you a Jake Paula? <laughs> Fuck off. What? You heard me, do you like Jake Paul? Not wanting to be rude since this kid is like 10. So I'm like, no, sorry. And he's like, what? He then proceeds to start dabbing. Shout out to uh, Buff Helpy. Not paying attention and putting on my normal shirt, I ignore him. Entitled Kid says, I am dabbing on the haters. Do you play Fortnite? Occasionally, yeah. I really didn't. I just didn't want to see what he would do if I said I did. Okay, you're probably a noob. I have 300 wins and I can beat you in a 1v1. And I have over 300 confirmed kills, kid. You got nothing on me, buddy. Okay, kid. Can you please move? I'm going to change my pants now. Ha! <laughs> I bet you don't even have a pee, pee That's why you're hiding it. I'm caught off guard because this was the last thing that I expected him to do. I'm like, what? Yeah, you're a girl. At this point, it was getting weird, and I only saw one other man. So I'm like, hey, is this your kid? And they're like, yeah, so? Can you tell him to leave me alone? He's really close to me and is making me uncomfortable. Why do you care? 
It's only a little kid. He's curious at this age. He can do what he wants. Oh, buddy, not in this context, please. No, tell him to go away or I'll leave and get the lifeguard. Hey, you can't do that. This is a free country, man. I can do anything I want, man. Then I can get the lifeguard if your son doesn't get away from me. Fine, what a brat. Come here, entitled kid. I then finished changing and left the locker room without my friend who had been watching and laughing his ass off the entire time. I told my mom about what happened and we both went to tell the front desk people. But I don't know what else happened to them after that. Anyway, I got lucky it didn't escalate further and I just went home and played Call of Duty after that. Bye. Dab, 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 flex. I'm just not going to take those stories seriously, I'm sorry. So, if I can do what I want, I can yeet the child into the pool, right? Oh, whoa, whoa, hold up, buddy. You missed the important part. He can do whatever he wants, not you. Including touching your pe- <laughs> Hold up. He likes Jake Paul, he dabs, and he plays Fortnite. He's worse than the Ice Age baby. <laughs> yeah, my cringe level was like over 9,000 or more. Stop it. These are all references you guys probably don't understand, and I'm sorry, I, I'm not gonna, not gonna talk about them either. We're gonna move on to the next story. And our next post by Fuzzy106. Entitled mother doesn't get that she's not entitled to kittens or my personal space. So I work as a volunteer slash adoption coordinator for a local animal rescue group. It's a pretty small organization that I've been with for quite some time now. We don't have our own shelter, but we're partnered with a couple of pet supply chain stores that help us get some of our animals out into the open for people to see, specifically the company where the pets go. Well, in the light of the COVID-19 crisis, and given that our governor issued a shelter at home order, we decided that despite the fact that the store was staying open to serve the community, we would be pulling our cats out of the in-store habitat and placing them with fosters until this whole situation calms down. We did this for the safety of our volunteers and so that we don't create another gathering point where people will undoubtedly smash their faces and hands on the habitat to try and pet the cats through the door. I went in yesterday to meet our foster and to do a deep clean of the habitat itself. I showed up a bit before our foster did, in worn out gym clothes with my earbuds in. The staff all wear jeans, a store branded shirt and a name tag. I decided to get a head start on the cleaning while waiting for the foster to show. I set up the foldable barriers they use for their puppy training classes to prevent people from getting in my way and or accidentally touching cleaning chemicals. The store was mostly empty, but I wanted to be on the safe side. Our story begins, as so many do on this subreddit, with some bitchy Karen flying out of the ether with her spawn in tow. She's like, excuse me, does anyone work around here? I've been looking for someone to help me for almost 30 minutes now and I can't find anyone. So I'm like, I'm sorry about that, ma'am. The staff are all in the front. They must have thought that the store was still empty. Points to the staff. Oh, look, there they are. Why can't you help me? Oh, look, I don't work for the store. I volunteer with the rescue group. So? So I don't know where everything you're looking for is. Look, the manager over there can help you. Ugh. Your generation doesn't understand good customer service at all. Heaven forbid you should ever take out your headphones and help a customer. I can't believe your boss let you wear those in front of customers. Manager, who's a super chill older dude, walks over after seeing Entitled Mother harassing me and is like, how can I help you, ma'am? Are you the manager? Yes. You should really have a talk with your employee here. He was very rude to me and refused to help me. He doesn't work here. What do you mean he doesn't work here? Do you let random people clean the store? He's a volunteer for the rescue group we're partnered with. They're responsible for the habitat, not us. I can help you find what you're looking for. Fine, I'm looking for item for her dog. Manager walks off and listens to her bitch about how the store has no employees around. Knowing this manager, he's probably tuning her out. His staff are all really good at their jobs. They probably legitimately thought that the store was empty. So I went back to cleaning, and our foster mum showed up to pick up the two kittens we had in the habitat. We greeted each other, and I led her behind my barrier to come pull out the kittens. We made small talk for a few minutes, thanking her for being so understanding about the whole situation, 
when Entitled Mother comes back for more. As she approaches, we're pulling the kittens out of their habitat and loading them into the carriers to be taken. Entitled Mother's spawn notices and goes, Mommy, I want to pet the kitty. Of course, sweetie. Looks at the foster. Can we hold the kitten, please? My son wants to play with it. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we're not allowing visitation right now. You're letting her hold them? She's our foster mum. She's being kind enough to home them for a while until this health crisis calms down. Well, can't we just hold them for a few minutes? I'm sorry, but no. We're doing all we can to minimize human contact right now. Any other time I would say yes, but we're trying to be as cautious as possible, especially since it's not confirmed whether or not this disease is transmittable to pets. I'm not sick. With all due respect, unless you were tested for COVID in the last 15 minutes, neither of us know that's for sure. I do not wish to jeopardize your health or ours. Please understand. Ugh, you're being so dramatic. It's just a flu. You should stop listening to the lame stream media and learn some facts. Entitled kids crying and is like, I wanna pet the kitty, I wanna, I wanna. Now you made my son cry. Fine, I want to take one of those kittens home myself. How much are they? They're $100 each to adopt, but it's not that easy. You need to fill out an application. Oh, for goodness sake, they're just cats. I can go find one on the street. What's the big deal? Well, we want them to go to good homes that will fit their personalities and your lifestyle. We ask for an application and an interview with our adoption coordinator to ensure that nobody winds up in the wrong home. And you don't think I take care of my animals? Not at all, ma'am. This is just our process. We need to make sure that the cats we adopt go to homes where they'll do well in, and that the family that takes them will mesh with the cat's personality. Please respect it. Any other animal shelter will require you to do the same. I don't care. My son wants to hold the cat. Let him hold it now. No. Fine. I'll be waiting in the parking lot for them. Maybe you'll change your tune when you're not on camera. Foster's like, excuse me, did you just threaten me and my animals? I don't know about that. Maybe I did. Maybe you hand over one of those cats and we'll call it even. Oh, hell no. Manager. The manager, who was watching from a distance, runs over at the speed of a spry but still elderly gentleman and's like, what's wrong, fuzzy one? Call the police. This lady just threatened to assault our foster and steal her cats. The manager pulls the phone off his belt and immediately calls the cops. Panicking, the woman grabs her still sobbing kid and books it out of the store, abandoning her cart. Manager tells the police to cancel the call because the lady just bounced. So we waited and watched for a few minutes to make sure Karen didn't come back and that our foster was safe. We have Karen's face on camera, so they know to watch for her next time. I hope she does try to adopt from us. It'll be the fastest denial I'll ever have the pleasure of issuing. Hippity hoppity, hand my entitled kid your property. So where do I start? This event happened only hours ago. I was riding on the bus to return home from work. It's a fairly half hour ride most of the times I'm on my phone. What? Listening to some music while scrolling through Reddit or playing games. Today, I decided to just listen to music and have a snack. I always carry croissants in my bag with strawberry jelly and butter. No more than two minutes after I got my croissant out of my bag, I feel a tap on the back of my shoulder. I turn around and who do I see? The mad titan Karen and her little spawn. E. The conversation went something like this. I'm like, yes? Excuse me, young man, but do you think my son can have that? Points at my croissant. He hasn't eaten anything all day, and I've been too busy to get him some food. Um, sorry, but this is the only one I got. And... Entitled Mother cuts me off. Don't make it such a big deal. It's only a dumb croissant. I'm sure you have more in your bag. I can see from here that it's full with stuff. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Either way, it's not really a beeswax. Now, please leave me alone. Entitled kid's like, Mommy, you said I can have a croissant. Yes, honey, but that mean person won't give you a croissant. Turns on me and says, See, you're making my baby sad. Give him the croissant right now. No, I'm not giving your kid my snack. And don't blame this on me. It's your bad parenting you should blame. 
Teaching your children to take food from strangers? Who in their right mind does that? How dare you talk to me like that? You know I'm old enough to be your mother? Give me that. Entitled mother then tries to grab either my croissant or my bag off of my hands. She probably thought I had more in, which I didn't. But with that act in place, I pushed Entitled Mother away from me and she fell on the bus floor. <laughs> and, and everyone did the dinosaur. She then started yelling of how I assaulted her and that she's gonna sue me. The bus stopped and the driver hopped off his seat and stormed on our way. And you could tell he was not happy. What the hell is going on? He assaulted me. Please call the police. This man is crazy. You assaulted me first. I just defended myself. Yeah, cut the crap. I saw you from the camera. Bus driver in my country have installed security cameras so that they can see what is going on in their bus from a little monitor at their driving seat. But, but, get off my bus before I call the cops on you. Entitled mother grabbed her kid, who's now crying and throwing a tantrum, and left the bus. Bus driver asked if I'm okay. I told him yes, and we make a joke of how crazy that woman was to make me laugh. What a nice guy. And our next post by Rye the Red Zombie. Parent angry that school is closed and thinks the students are the cause. Proceeds to insult my family and ask for cash. So last week, the provincial government announced that schools will be closed until April 6. What my mum found on a WeChat group chat full of parents of students from my school, translated from Chinese says, I can't believe that school is closed. How will my children succeed in life? They'll starve. I can't believe it. It's probably the student's fault. I don't believe that the government would do such a thing. I'm going to go have a chat with my children, and you guys should too. Children are so naughty these days, and they're definitely the cause of this no schooling. What the f I'm going to have a word with the superintendent and the premier. My mum showed it to me with a disgusted face. I took a screenshot with it sent it to my computer, and showed it to my schoolmates on a Google Hangouts group chat full of students from my school. Some of their expressions were amazing. The parent eventually found out and contacted my mum, saying how I was a bully and demanding that I delete the message. You can't delete a Hangouts message. He or she, probably a she, so that's what I'm going to use, proceeded to call me an uneducated Chinese curse and saying that I was probably the one behind the no school and how I owed all the parents an apology for my crimes and that I had to get my phone taken away. I don't even have a phone and belongs in a reformatory. That tramp went further by demanding our home address so she could call the police on me for cyberbullying. My mum said she was crazy that beer then called my mother a bunch of Chinese curse words and demanded compensation, i.e. a bucket load of cash amongst other things. And I had to go through public shaming and saying, I hope your family dies from the... Oh God, what's wrong with people? So I took another screenshot of her message and showed it to the same Hangouts chat and the parents WeChat group. The entitled parent was shamed by other parents and I had a nice chat with my friends about the Entitled Parent. Entitled Parent went crazy, saying how she was divorced, I can see why, and that they were humiliating her, and that we should be locked up, and that we had to pay her for public shaming her. She even called the cops, but that didn't affect anything because she has no idea where we live. She's now planning to move to Alberta. I'm just amazed at how she was ignorant that China had to stop school as well. Nah, man, Alberta's good, fam. Maybe Newfoundland wants her. I prefer she moves to the tip of Nunavut and becomes a popsicle. Or just moves to all... Stop it. You guys are naughty. Stop it. And our next story. Entitled aunt tries to snatch necklace from two-year-old niece's neck. Gets shut down and told never to come back to the house. This is my first time posting here and it's probably going to get buried. English isn't my first language, and I'm using mobile, so forgive any mistakes or formatting errors. And this is kinda long, oops. And if somebody could write an appropriate TLDR, I will add it in. This happened to my mum and me a long time ago, although I don't remember anything as I was very young. Before getting to the main story, I'd like to give some backstory on my aunt. Our cast are Entitled Aunt, Cousin, My Mum, My Dad, and Well Me. So Entitled Auntie was the only sister of seven brothers. 
so you can imagine how spoilt she was. She would purposefully make her parents buy her jewelry and other expensive items, which they couldn't afford and keep a family of 10 afloat. In short, she got everything she wanted, and being an only sister slash daughter, had the sole attention and love of her parents and brothers. My dad, especially, really loved his sister and to be honest, didn't care for my mum at all. He was also the favourite brother of Entitled Auntie. Entitled Auntie was married to a guy who couldn't exactly afford her lavish spending, and she relied on my dad for everything that she wanted. The moment my mum was married into the family, arranged marriage because that's how things work over here, Entitled Auntie got very jealous. Mainly because of the fact that until then, she was the apple of his eye. And since my dad landed a pretty good job solely due to this hard work and built his own house, not to mention took in his mother and his mentally handicapped younger brother, because no one else could be bothered to look after them, she could easily leech off of him. She would torture my mother for any reason she could find. She wouldn't let dad buy anything for mum. She would make mum do all the work in the whole household, including hers. And even though she didn't stay at the house, she'd bring her laundry from her own house so mum could wash it. When mum was heavily pregnant with me, and obviously wasn't supposed to do any tenuous work, she would still force her to do everything, including heavy lifting. Mum eventually left to her own home a month before her due date and got the rest she deserved being taken care of by my sweet grandma. After I was born, Mum got a job as a teacher. It was her lifelong dream even though she had to pay money to the school for it. Again, it's a government job and this is how it is for everyone here. My mum definitely wasn't cheating and was qualified for said job. Mum, having no other way, decided to ask Dad for the money required, which he was ready to give until entitled Auntie storms in and shuts it down. Eventually, Mum had to borrow money from her sister and land the job. There's tons of stories about her which I couldn't actually believe because I couldn't fathom the possibility that someone could be so entitled. Getting to the main story. After I was born, my dad completely shifted focus from entitled auntie to me, because I was and still am his only child. Entitled auntie didn't like this, but knew how much dad wouldn't like it if she did something to his child. As I said, dad has a lot of siblings, and he was the second youngest, so everyone else was already married and had kids of their own. When I was around two years old, Dad's mother decided to buy every grandchild a silver pendant and a special gold one for C, as she was entitled auntie's kid. Mum bought a nice platinum chain for the pendant with her hard-earned money. My dad then decided to buy a nice diamond pendant because he thought it looked good with the chain and switched out the silver pendant. Entitled auntie couldn't afford to buy a matching gold necklace for the pendant, so she pestered my dad to buy one for C, to which he complied. This was before she knew what he'd bought for me. To clarify, as far as I know, C isn't an entitled tramp and I like her a lot. Few days later, she comes over with cousin. I was in the cradle and since we'd just come back from a wedding, I was still wearing the necklace. Entitled auntie sees this and belittles mum, thinking it was fake, and brags about how cousin got a lovely gold pendant and matching chain. Mum didn't say anything and went on with her work. Dad came home and tells Entitled Auntie about the necklace during random chit chat. Entitled Auntie then asks Dad to give her the necklace for Cousin. Dad says no and reminds her that she just bought Cousin a gold chain. Entitled Auntie loses her crap. I think she just wasn't used to hearing no from Dad. Starts screaming about how her angel deserved it more and that Dad should give it to Cousin as they didn't have as much money as we did. Dad firmly says no and tells her even if he wanted to, he couldn't, as the chain was bought by mum. Entitled auntie tried to snatch the necklace from my neck, which promptly made me cry, which apparently annoyed her even more. Mum swats her hand away, livid at the fact that she was not only stealing, but hurting her child in the process. To which she had a whole meltdown, bawling about how dad didn't care for her or cousin at all, and all his attention went to me. Dad stood his ground and said no. Then this person decides to tell Dad, who literally catered to her every wish, how worthless of a brother he is, and how his daughter is going to turn up just like him. I think Dad just snapped at that point. 
He told her to leave his house and how he's so tired of dealing with her crap. She then angrily left the house. Next day, she came back again, bringing some homemade snacks and sweet talking about how she just had a mood swing and how she was so sorry. Dad entertained this for a while, thinking that she was genuinely sorry, but then she tried to ask for the necklace again and the same argument ensued, after which she was kicked out and told to never come back to his house again. I guess after that, she understood her place and that dad wasn't going to bend to her will anymore, especially if it was regarding me. She passed away a couple years later. My mom rejoiced at the passing away of this evil incarnation. That's grim, but okay. You write and spell better than many on Reddit. Good for you. Edit to add, a few more paragraph breaks would help too. Don't mean that in a mean way, but you obviously worked very hard on your English, and I want to help you get even better. Keep up the good work. I always thought how good I did in English only applied to my country's standards. Thank you, you made my day, smiley face. Edit, you're right, the last paragraph especially was way too long, thank you for the advice. Wow, what a tramp. It's good you no longer have to deal with her. Yes, I know that's a horrible thing to say, but from the sounds of it, you're better off. Not horrible when you think of all the other things that she's done that I haven't mentioned. I'm happy that my mum doesn't have to deal with this anymore. Damn, why didn't I think of things you didn't mention, lol? I'm glad for you and your mum, though. Lol, forgot about that one minor detail. One minor detail can change a whole person. That entitled auntie. You don't rely on your siblings to get you nice things. When you're an adult, you get a paying job and buy those nice things yourself. If your brother chooses to spoil you, he can, but don't go begging for more. She only did it to my dad, which was mainly his fault because everyone else put her in her place after the first couple of times. Entitled mother slaps my kid for having a different opinion and she gets what she freaking deserves. Okay, some things to get out of the way. This is on mobile and English isn't my first language. I'll cast her, me, entitled mother, and my 16 year old daughter. On to the story. So I'm on my way to lunch with daughter. And where I was, there were a bunch of anti-abortion groups and personally, me and my daughter are pro-choice. But as we are walking, there's this lady who was walking up to people and asking them if they think a woman should get abortions. And if they said yes, she would say, you people kill children. We were trying to avoid her, but eventually she walked right up to us, her children behind her. And she's like, what are your thoughts on abortions? My daughter says, um, I think women should be able to choose whether they should or shouldn't. So you think we should kill babies? Well, it's their future and they should choose and not be pressured. You people sicken me. And when I walk on, I hear, whap. I turn around and my daughter is on the sidewalk with a red handprint on her cheek. Let me tell you, I have never ran faster in my life at that entitled mother and I have never punched someone harder than that in my life. I know violence probably wasn't the answer in that situation, but nobody hits my daughter. The entitled mother just sat there in awe at me, and I'm like, no one hits my daughter, beer. I grabbed my daughter's hand and walked to the diner and went about the rest of the day. We had to deal with the police because the entitled mother did call the police for assault but we got off scot-free because there were cameras around and there were bystanders that backed us up and the entitled mother did get a $150 fine. Now that is epic. I have never understood the ideology behind, I believe you're supporting a violent act, therefore I will beat the violence out of you with protesters. How do they not see the hypocrisy? You dare be violent proceeds to beat. Beating a child, no less. <laughs> Saving children, right? No, 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 not one of those children outside the womb with needs and Oh god, okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> it's getting a bit too much. Mother tried to get me fired for corrupting young children with sinful and satanic behavior. As a preface, I don't worship Satan. I play Dungeons and Dragons, which is like the same thing, right? So last year, I got invited to work as a swim coach at the country club where I first started swimming, as I know swim at the D1 college level. This was an incredible opportunity for me and I loved it. I'm very well liked by almost all of the parents, even some that I've known for over a decade. 
The entitled mother in this story was pretty new, only being there for now a year. Last summer, I had started getting in Dungeons and & Dragons, and I honestly love it so much. I was at a game store looking at getting new dice and books while having a guy there explain miniatures to me, when Entitled Mother came in as she had seen me outside. She was very nice and asked me what I was doing there. I said I was here to get some stuff to play Dungeons and & Dragons, and that's when things turned bad, as she started to call me a Satan worshipper, saying her piece, then left and I thought that was the end of it, but boy was I wrong. The next day at practice, I was with this little five-year-old boy who Haya had known since he was born, and the entitled mother came over to yell at me to not corrupt him. After yelling at me, the little boy's mother came over to me and asked what was going on. The entitled mother said that I was a Satan worshipper, and maybe worse, insinuating that I was a pedophile. The mum had known me since I was a little kid, and had helped babysit her youngest two children, and was always best friends with her oldest kid who had Down Syndrome, but he was the coolest guy I ever met, and he and I did private lessons all the time. Looking confused, I explained the situation, and the mum helped me to get her to back off. Yet, it still did not end there. She talked to other parents at the club to get them against me. Unfortunately for her, I was the club's golden boy, a title I don't really like or cared about. I got it for being the team's best swimmer, ever, and really good with kids. When this didn't work, she went to my boss, the head coach. Now, the head coach didn't like me as I had tried to get her fired. There's several reasons I did this. Mainly, she as the head lifeguard left no one there to watch the pool, to go on dates, then got a promotion. I got treated poorly, but when going to the higher up, she was let go. I had also known him since I was a kid as well. In the end, Entitled Mother didn't get her way, but she had tried to take my job away for a hobby. I'm still super into Dungeons and & Dragons, and she still claims I'm a violent Satanist. She says this as she found out I love hard rock and play video games, but I was lucky because I knew all these people. It's sad because to avoid dealing with this, I don't think I will be applying again this year, which is upsetting because of all the memories there, and it was ruined by a game meant to help people connect socially, be creative, use problem solving, and just have fun. Edit because a lot of people were asking. While this event left a sour taste in my mouth, I also don't feel like going back because even after reporting my boss, she immediately got a fudging promotion when the staff was told she would be let go instead. I also have moved since and don't plan on returning home, instead stay in New York for a summer. There were many things that made me not want to apply there this summer, but she was just one of them. And our next post. My sister, the entitled mother, has decided to kick my mum out of her own house, because she visited me and my husband for Mother's Day because she didn't want to infect her child. Title says it all, but I'll go into detail. My sister lives with my parents, along with her boyfriend and my niece. My mum pays for everything, rent, food, entitled mother can't even be trusted to give money to go to a food shop, holidays, etc. Since my mum is divorcing my dad, she decided to move out and get her own place, and her name is on the original house. Now, last week in the UK, they decided to put tougher measures on contact due to COVID. I thought since we can't go out, my mum can visit us and we can do the two meter distancing. I am very strict with this kind of thing since my work has been giving daily health and safety lectures. Have dinner and just chat with her. I haven't seen my mum in a couple of months and I thought that it was a nice gesture for Mother's Day. Now. My sister has decided that me and my husband are sick, even though she spoke to me the day before and I was fine, and that I am now going to infect my mum and therefore her child. So now she has threatened my mum not to come back, but transfer her money for my niece's childcare, all the span of a 10 minute tirade. Yeesh. I told my mum to treat it as a personal vacation from her constant demands and enjoy the next three weeks while it lasts. Maybe make it four weeks. She laughed, and we had a good Sunday dinner. Right, well, in my house, my mum and I are socially distancing. Really not being in the same room as each other, she's high risk and all that. Now, your mum should not be going out to visit you, but that's whatever. 
However, if your sister wants to play that game, tell her fine. But she gets no childcare, no money for the house, no food for the next month, and see what happens next. Look, I get the social distancing thing. I am the only one working on the entire floor of my work, and I probably shouldn't have done it at the time. But even then, under those circumstances, everything was done to health codes at the time. It is changing day by day. So at the time, it was no gatherings of four or more people, and keeping two meter distances from people. Wash hands if you come in contact with foreign surfaces, and wash hands as much as you possibly can. We now have a ban on anyone coming into our house, and we only travel to and from work. I work in a chemical treatment plant that is very strict on health and safety. And I do tell my mum to stand up for herself, but my mum doesn't want my sister and my niece to become homeless in this pandemic. I can't physically do anything more than that. Look, OP, I totally know where you're coming from. The social distancing thing is really hard, even when we're without families. And I know it's hard for even a parent to stand up to their child, when there is a grandchild involved. The entitled mother loves to weld the power over that. Really hope your mum can stand up to her. Now that the lockdown has come, we have placed a ban on anyone entering our home. So now we just FaceTime each other. I hope she does too, but I doubt that will ever happen. Heck, that's a hard situation, that one. And our next post. Mother flips out because I ordered vegan option with egg. So I'll start by saying I'm mostly vegan, but I occasionally indulge in an egg or some cheese at breakfast. This morning happened to be one of those occasions. It wasn't planned or anything. I went out to buy donuts for the factory. One of my guys is having his last day today, so I figured it would be nice if I bought everyone donuts to send him off. Next to our favorite donut joint, Daniel's Donuts in Springvale, Victoria, Australia, if anyone's interested, that is, best fudging donuts ever, is a Hungry Jack's. That's Australia's Burger King for the rest of ya. Don't know why they rebranded down here, but they did. God, Hungry Jack's is so good. Anyways, I hadn't had breakfast this morning, and figured, screw it, I'll pop into HJ's for a vegan avocado muffin. Now, those things were alright, but I was a little extra hungry and kinda in the mood for an egg. So I asked for the vegan avo muffin with egg in a large meal. Coke for the drink, Coke for breakfast, come on buddy. It's at this point a woman who had already ordered completely lost her fudging mind. Should mention she is an entitled mother, as she did have a little kid with her. Poor little bugger was quiet the whole time though. The woman went up to the counter and asked them what I had ordered. I was raised to mind my own business, so while I could overhear the conversation, I shut my mouth. What did that tradie just order? Vegan meal with egg. Well, if it was an egg, it can't be vegan. Change the order so there's no egg. I can't do that, ma'am. He ordered what he wanted and paid for the extra egg. That's ridiculous. If I order a vegan burger with bacon, would you make it? Of course, but that's impossible. Bacon isn't vegan. This went on for a bit until I lost it and started laughing. You think this is funny? What the frick is wrong with you? Nothing. I ordered a delicious meal and you're losing your mind. It's pretty funny. You're just a fudging troll. I bet this whole thing was just a joke and you ordered this to piss me off. Lady, how would I have known it would piss you off? Sorry, are you vegan or something? Do I look like a stinking hippie? No, I'm not fudging vegan, and neither are you. You're too fudging fat to be vegan. Lol, I've heard this before. I haven't eaten meat in 26 years, since I was a little nipper. But I've been fat most of my life, and have heard, you can't be vegan slash vegetarian because you're fat. Can I just please dispel that misconception? Just because you don't eat meat, doesn't mean you eat healthy. And yet I'm a vegan, but I occasionally enjoy an egg. Even if I wasn't, I don't see how it's any business of yours what I order and why. Maybe I'm not vegan, but like just the patty and avo? Don't be stupid. You obviously did this to piss me off. Change your order now. Lady, I'm not changing anything, and you can kiss the fattest part of my ass if you don't like it. Kick him out! Kick him out of the store! Kick him out! <laughs> now, there is no satisfying ending to this, except that my meal was ready and I grabbed it. She reached out her hand to take it, but I was quicker than her. I smiled at her and said bon appetit before leaving. 
There was no store manager, no men in white coats to drag this beer away kicking and screaming, and no child service rep to swoop in and save the kid. Just a crazy expletive who can't mind her own business. And me, a dude who encounters way too many crazies. It's cause you live in Victoria mate, it's full of them. And our next one. It's Italian tradition. It's a touchy subject right now. <laughs> this story takes place during the week my wife and I got married. I was 28 at the time. We had a destination wedding in the Bahamas and it was amazing. We had 15 people able to join us. We had picked the Bahamas as it was the first place my wife and I ever did a vacation. And it's where I proposed to her. So for us, the week was pure magic. Now onto the story of my mother. I would write about her antics during the whole week, but I don't think people want to read a book, so I'll talk about the wedding at day itself. I think we do want to read a book here, please. It's Wednesday, middle of our trip. Both me and my wife wanted to follow the don't see each other before the wedding rule. We've gotten some flack for it, but whatever. We were getting married off the resort in a small blue church in a nature sanctuary. I was to go first and my wife would follow. While waiting on the rides for me, my best man and our guests, my mom kept saying things like, it's Italian tradition for the mother to take photos with the groom before the wedding. It's Italian tradition for the mother to take photos with the best man and the guests. This was getting annoying, but then my mother pulls me aside and starts to have a heart to heart talk with me, which I thought was going to go one way. It was basically a lecture about how important she is and how selfish I was. She ended it with, it's also Italian tradition to wear these cufflinks. I was expecting cufflinks from what my grandpa wore at his wedding. I respected him greatly. He was a huge influence in my life. She pulls out these dollar store cufflinks and keeps trying to pass them off as a family heirloom. I later found out that she had bought them in the Bahamas as an impulse buy. Also, my suit wasn't made with cufflinks in mind. Anyways, as the ride shows up, my mother tells me, Oh, don't forget, it's, <laughs> it's Italian tradition for the mother to walk with the son down the aisle. Everyone looked at her like she was crazy. Because even my idiot knows that's not a tradition anywhere. I don't know what they meant by that, probably them being the idiot. I called her out on that, and she starts arguing with me. She sort of relents and tells me, well, if you're going to break your mother's heart, at least follow the Italian tradition of making your brother the usher. I told her that like only six people were coming with me, but fine, whatever. We finally leave. My mother staying behind to stay with the bride's side. Lord knows what crap she tried to pull with her. We get to the nature sanctuary and go to the small blue church that can hold maybe 40 people. Everyone just sits where they want, and my brother stands by the door. Now... My wife's maid of honor is her best friend, and she's a sickeningly amazing person. Honestly, she's properly the most selfless person on the planet. Honestly, her only flaw is that she is very loud. I bring that up because when my wife and everyone with her pulls up, you can hear the maid of honor and the distance between us is large. I perk up and get ready when my brother, who is still standing by the door says, OP, I'ma go have a smoke and explore the park. And I tell them, we just heard them pull up. No. He tries arguing with me, but finally just shuts up and gives me the dirtiest look for the rest of the day. The place is huge and maze-like. The other guests show up. Everyone gets their seat. We didn't care who sat where. We start the wedding and I see my soon-to-be wife as a bride, as a bride, come around the corner. My heart stops and I realize that this is the best moment in my life. Everyone else apparently knew what I was thinking because I had a smile that went from ear to ear. Honestly, the two seconds of her coming around the corner made all my stress vanish. My wife looked at me and gave me a huge smile as well. Seeing her walk down the aisle is a memory I replay in my head all the time. Sorry for the sappy bit. Wedding goes great. We do our vows and I can hear my best man behind me crying like his mum just died. Oh, talk about sweet. After the ceremony, my mother is back into Italian tradition mode. It's Italian tradition for the mother to have a photo with the groom. It's Italian tradition for the mother to XYZ. If I were to type out everything that was Italian tradition, no one would read this. 
Later, when we got our photos back, my mother had this scowl in her face in the entire time. There's one that's my favorite because it's during the whole do you take OP to be part, and she has this look of like pure disgust and hatred. It's great! So we get back to the resort. We have our reception. I think that's what it's called. I'm just an idiot and forget. My mother tries to start it out by saying, it's Italian tradition for the mother of the groom to do three speeches. My best man was not having that and put his foot down on who does a speech. He kicked ass at keeping her sanity in control during the week. Everyone does their speeches. My now in-laws do theirs and hand us a card. In it, it says, when we get home, we will give you $1,000 as a wedding present. Awesome. My mom tried a few more Italian traditions. One was about her cutting the cake. Several were about her and various photos with people. The cap to the night after dinner. My mother walks up to me and my now wife and says to her, how much did your parents give you? She was like, huh? And my mother goes, well, it's Italian tradition for the groom's parents to give double of the bride's parents. We paused in confusion and told her they haven't given us anything yet, but they will give us $3,000 when we get home. My mother goes, good, I'll give you $3,000 then. We were like, okay. Spoilers, my mother never gave us a single penny. It's been four years since our wedding and my mother tells people that she paid for everything. The wedding, my suit, my wife's dress. Her grandma with dementia bought it for her, so that really pisses my wife off. All 17, that is counting my wife and me, 17 people's airfare, hotel, wedding ceremony too, and so much more. The only thing she paid for was her and my brother's trip, and the only reason my brother came was because it was a free vacation for him. And I'll end it with this fun fact. I'm half Italian, but have never once in my life done anything Italian or have acknowledged my Italian half. My wife and I also don't care about tradition. She's Polish, I'm half Italian, half Irish. We got married in a Christian Bahamian church. What's also funny is my mother refuses to call my wife her name. She just says, your wife, in a snide tone. How are you and your wife? Kind of thing, you know? So yeah, that's my Italian traditional wedding. And yes, I have cut that toxic woman out of my life. You know, it's Italian tradition for there to be a money tree on the gift table and all gifts of cash are to be presented at the services as leaves of the tree. Your mother's a bad Italian. It's an Italian tradition for the mother to give half of her fortune to her son for getting married. So she's a terrible Italian. God, now I wanna be an Italian. What the hell? And now, our next post, ladies and gentlemen. Entitled Mother Tries to Steal My Prom Dress. Okay, so this is my first time posting here. Basic stuff. The dialogue here is translated from another language. Please bear with me as I try to get it closest to it as I could. Also, grammar. Please excuse any grammar mistakes. Our cast are Entitled Mother, Karen. Innocent Kid, which is the poor innocent kid of Karen. Taylor, my mom, and me, your local alien, not Dio. On with the story. This all happened back in February, and I thought it would be kind of fun to bring it up. Sorry if this is kind of short, for this is literally the first time I encountered a Karen in the wild. It was a week before prom when mom and I picked up my prom dress. The tailor was almost done with it, so we decided to wait for a bit. It was on the mannequin as people walked by to ask how much it was. Taylor had to explain that someone, i.e. me, had it made so they just left it alone. Of course, everyone except Entitled Mother. And that is when <laughs> crap hit the fan. Excuse me, but how much do you want for this? She means the dress. I'm sorry ma'am, but that's custom made gown and someone already paid for it. By who? I don't see anyone here who seems to have the same size for this. Me owns that. What? Nonsense. They don't even look like it, they're too short. Wow, rude. Don't you dare talk back to your elders. Do you have any respect whatsoever? Aren't you a hypocrite? Ma'am, please leave, or I would have no choice but to call security. That's when the entitled mother grabbed the mannequin and started to leave. Taylor and mum grabbed the other end of the mannequin as it suddenly became a tug of war. 
Of course, with Entitled Mother being shorter and weaker, Taylor and Mum managed to get the mannequin back and dress without any damages. Entitled Mother cussed us all out before she went storming out. Innocent Kid apologized for Entitled Mother's behavior with her face flustered from embarrassment and they left afterwards. Everything went smooth after that and we never heard from Entitled Mother ever again. The end. I apologize if this is kind of anticlimactic, but we didn't really press any charges or anything since we didn't want any further troubles. And our next post. I know the store owner and you are going to get banned. So about a month back, I was doing food shopping for a neighbor. They recently injured their leg and sent me to get some food. They gave me money and sent me on my way. I spent over 10 minutes in the queue, and when I got to the counter, an entitled mother pushed me out of the way, saying that I had cut ahead of her. When I got pushed, I fell over and hurt my knee, and cursed as it was quite painful, and the entitled mother thought that I was talking at her. She insulted me, which I handled well, until she said, Redhead, ooh. In case you were wondering, I'm actually white, and I hate the idea of racism in modern society. I get up, look her dead in the eye, and do nothing for a few seconds. Then I say, if you think that you can call anyone that, then you deserve a boot lodged up your fat entitled ass. I am normally a very calm person, and a few other people there knew me well so the fact that I screamed was probably a shock. The entitled mother said that she was on her way way to shake hands with the president and was not going to wait for an idiot boy to rub his two brain cells together. That's when I said, by president, do you mean the person who's been waiting an hour for that 50 cent hand job? <laughs> she turned to me and said, my cousin's friend's wife is the manager and you're getting banned for life. This is very funny as the manager saw everything and she said, actually, you're the one getting banned, and the police are getting called for disruptive behavior and child abuse. Long story short, this woman was arrested and was under the influence, and now has to spend three months in jail. Thank you for reading this post. Thank you, uh, Peachy Art, for the comments. Checks all the boxes of terribly written story. No crap, how are people buying this? I think people are getting desperate for tales of the real world right now. Aren't we all boys and girls, aren't we all? So, I helped get my entitled auntie kicked out of the house. This was almost 10 years ago, and we still talk about it to this day. But when I graduated high school in 2010, I promised my great-grandma that I would move in to help with certain stuff, because she was getting older and suffering from arthritis. She's now 88 and still kicking it, by the way. Around this time, her sister, the entitled auntie, was living with her. She didn't have a house of her own and kept saying that she'd get one, but would just forget about it for some reason. Anyway, this entitled auntie is one of the most hypocritical and rudest people ever. She's a Catholic and works at a nearby church, and yet she's the classic homophobic, anti-atheist, anti-Muslim, anti-abortion, anti-anything that she claimed would send people to hell while claiming to be a loving Catholic. You get the idea. In 2011, I moved in with my great-grandma, and from the very beginning, Entitled Auntie decided to try and make my life miserable. She would brag about her grandkids, and say that they'll be successful in life, and say since I'm autistic and an atheist, and not going anywhere in life anytime soon, and if only OP was like my grandkids, he would actually accomplish something. Now, her grandkids, my cousins, are much younger than me the oldest just turning 18, and they're anything but entitled. My aunt just glorifies them. I don't even think they respect her. Not even their mum respects her. Entitled auntie talks crap about her all the time and probably still does, but that's another story. Here is what kickstarted Entitled auntie getting booted out of the house. But for a bit of context, leading up to it, she started trash-talking me under her breath almost every day until one fateful afternoon. In 2012, my great-grandmother and my mum drove a few hours south to Santa Barbara to visit my brother who went to college at UCSB, which left me alone with Entitled Auntie. I went upstairs to give my dog a bath in the tub. After I was finished, I let the dog out the back, put the bath supplies on the porch, and went upstairs to clean the dirt off the tub. I bleached every inch of it, but apparently missed a small spot. That's when I heard my name being called. 
I go upstairs and lo and behold, it's entitled auntie. She's like, you never do anything right in here. You missed a spot. I look at the small smudge that was the size of a dime and I'm like, oh my bad, I got it. And this is why you're not getting a job anytime soon. You can't do anything right. You're getting worked up about a small bit of grime I missed? Chill out. No, you need to learn to be like my grandkids. They're perfect examples of, I don't care about their upbringings. Now, are you gonna shut it or do you want me to raise my voice at you? Now listen here, you little jerk. I don't care who you think you are. You will not disrespect me like that. At this point, I just grabbed my stuff, leashed up my dog and just left. I texted my mum the ordeal and she told my great grandmother. Now, my great grandma doesn't get mad, but boy, she was absolutely ticked off. When she got home, the first thing she told her was this. Gigi's like, I can't believe you would talk to my great grandson like that. What are you talking about? He told me and his mother everything. How dare you say these horrible things to him? Well, you should have heard what he said to me. I don't care. You have been rude to him ever since he moved in. Now, you have the next few months to find a house of your own because you're not living here ever again. That's final. My great grandma told her other siblings about the ordeal and it spread like wildfire. Relatives in Colorado, Texas, Florida, California, Nevada, and probably beyond heard about this and were absolutely livid at Entitled Auntie. My great grandma's one of 13 kids and had seven of her own and is also a cancer survivor. That's a whole lot of coolery for a four foot eight Hispanic lady. My family's big, but close to each other. Entitled Auntie found out about the crap storm she caused and blamed me for it saying, if you make stuff up about me ever again, I'll kick your ass. To which I replied, you don't respect me anyways, before she slammed the door. But her son, entitled auntie's son, didn't believe she was rude to me. So to prove it, I recorded audio of her trash talking me in her room. It was next to mine, so I would gently lay my phone on the door and it would catch her calling me names like queer or invalid or anything she could think of when she talked about me. I then sent them to my mum, who showed Entitled Auntie's son. He was shell-shocked and decided he would help kick her out just a couple of months after I recorded her insulting me. Now she lives with a friend, and I wouldn't be surprised if she still talked bad about me. Whenever I see her, she still ignores me. She knows I may be self-controlled, but I will not hesitate to make your life a living hell if you give me reasons to. As for Gigi, she's 88, still going strong, and barely talks to Entitled Auntie. My coworker thinks everyone owes her something because she's pregnant. So, for some backstory, my coworker and I used to be friendly. My dear husband, 26 male, and I, 24 female, started trying for a baby after we got married last May. Coworker, 19 female, and her boyfriend, 19 male, also started trying for a baby at this time, and I'm almost positive they only did it because we were. She got pregnant fairly quickly, and I still have not. She was semi-selfish before, but since she got pregnant, it's like a switch has flipped and she has become insufferable. Back in December, our job offered an opportunity for easy overtime. She picked up the first shift for like five hours. She told me that they needed someone for the next day and that she said they'd do it if they couldn't find anyone else and she was only doing it for like two hours, but it didn't seem like she wanted to. I wasn't doing anything that day and already had a fairly decent amount of overtime, so why not add more to my Christmas slash vacation check? So I told my boss I would do it. She didn't say anything to me after I volunteered. The next morning, her and I were going to be working together. She brought up the number of hours she had on that check, and I told her how many I had. She said, oh, you need a break. I'll do that over time. I told her no. She didn't need to. I was fine doing it. An hour later, she asked me, so am I staying or are you staying? I told her again that I was. Throughout the day, several times, she would mention how tired she was, and I would respond with, me too. And she would offer to do the overtime. I still said no, so I do the overtime. As I'm getting to leave, my replacement was telling me how pissed the coworker is that I took the overtime from her when I don't have kids, and how I know she has a baby to save up for. Okay, whatever. 
I ignore it. She asks me to plan her baby shower with her mom, and I agree because I can't say no. She always told me that her mom is nuts and constantly talks crap on her mom. Okay, whatever. Getting to know her mom, she seems really nice. Her mom has done so much for her to have a nice baby shower, and her parents bought them or give them pretty much every big ticket item for the baby. She is constantly asking her mom to bring her things or take her places because she doesn't feel like driving. Yet she still constantly talks crap on her mom. Okay, cool. You do that, girl. But the final straw with that is that she told another coworker yesterday that her mom was nuts, and I was ridiculous for talking to her. But yet she expects her mom to do all this crap for her baby shower. We ended up having to cancel the shower due to the CDC recommendations and quarantine issues. But last night, she kept telling me she didn't care and that she still wanted to have the shower. I feel bad for the baby. Me too. The saddest part is I don't even think she really cares about the baby. It's mostly for attention. That's what it sounds like. I can only hope that either A, the boyfriend wises up and leaves with the baby, B, the mum takes the baby, C, baby gets adopted by someone else. She shouldn't have a kid with her kind of attitude and BS. The boyfriend is even worse. He is so controlling and toxic. It's so gross. They both wanted a girl and they were pissed when they found out that it was a boy. I did a small gender reveal for the two of them at like 13 weeks. When they were going for their anatomy scan at 22 weeks, she said the boyfriend was like, maybe my name lied and it's really a girl and she was just playing a trick on us. Like, what the fu? Baby showers can be rescheduled. Sure, it's kinda inconvenient, but it's a safety issue for everyone, including your baby. I had a coworker like this too. Once she found out another worker was pregnant, she too was all of a sudden. I still think she was faking it just to get attention, but I got a new job before you could really tell. She complained all the time about being tired, and no one understood how hard it was. I was like, you're what now, six weeks? I get it can be exhausting, but you're working. Everyone is tired. And no one really cares to be honest. By the way, I hope you will be blessed soon with your own baby. Me and my husband have been trying for three years and are finally pregnant. It will happen when it's meant to. Good luck. She wanted to reschedule the baby shower for the first weekend of May. I told her no, I have plans for the weekend for my anniversary. She was ticked. She has been so dramatic about all of it. She called in two days last week for a cold or allergies. She didn't have a fever and tested negative for everything. She just didn't want to work. And thank you so much. And our next story was posted by user To Go To The Sun, titled Yet Another Virus Shopping Story. Another couple of stories from my mum's work at a large supermarket. So today they planned that the first hour from opening would be dedicated for people 65 plus to make sure they can get their food shopping. Well, turns out old people can be some of the rudest shoppers there is. They all expected that over 65 shopping equals fully stocked shelves, which isn't possible. My mum and her colleagues had to go to work two hours earlier than usual at 2am to do all the shopping and stocking for the rush today. And yet the shoppers were full of snide comments like, it's obvious they haven't restocked at all. It's appalling how little there is. What do you mean there's none of dot dot dot? Did any of you do any work? You're meant to be filling shelves. You better go find me dot 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 from the back. I know you've got some back there. Which is just horrible because of the effort they all go to, just getting taken for granted is like a smack in the face. One of my mum's colleagues is struggling with back pain from an injury, but he can't afford time off work. So he's been carrying heavy loads for two extra hours in pain because they all need the help they can get at the moment. Then there were plenty of her colleagues getting rammed by trolleys and having food taken out of online shopping totes, which is a problem because they have to scan the item before putting it in. And if someone takes it out, they have to cancel that item and rescan another one which put them back on their numbers, and they have to hit a certain target slash picks per minute every week. There was also a rule set that customers could only buy three packets of fresh meat, i.e. chicken breast, mince, pork chops, which caused an argument at the checkout. 
after one man tried to buy three packets of every fresh meat he could find. Another story was the man who tried to buy ten packages of bottled water. Well, when he was told he couldn't buy that much, as it wasn't fair on the other customers, he tipped his trolley over and attempted to throw his items at the checkout staff, who were only doing their jobs. He had to get stopped by the other customers. My mum's not sure what happened to him though, but hopefully the police made a visit. I get the stress of the pandemic, but it's really bringing the worst out of people. We've got to remember that shop staff are really doing everything they can at the moment, and don't deserve the bad rap they seem to be getting. If they weren't there, stockpiling wouldn't be possible, and no one would have any food. Please be kind to everyone today, and every day." That honestly is kind of mind-boggling, especially considering they're already getting preferential treatment by getting earlier hours the rest of the humanity isn't getting. That they're not appreciating, which is eventually going to make people slash businesses not even want to continue to offering them these preferences that they're not obligated to offer in the first place, by the way. If they think shelves are sparse for them, imagine families with kids, who have even less, after their special hours, before everyone else gets access to. I'm sure not all seniors are this way by any means. And I'm also likewise sure that many non-seniors are also this way. But to be honest, the most stories I've been hearing, observing personally, and seeing written, do invoke seniors. I don't know why that would be, and it's just an observation, and again, all of humanity sucks regardless of age at times. But there does seem to be something to it, huh? I'm in the US, and it's been a bit more noticeable here as well. And our next story was posted by user Pokemaster Mason, titled, My old neighbor tried to make my dad pay her because her dog got pregnant. This story is from when I was a little kid, and I remember this very well because my dad brings it up every chance that he gets. So our dog Sam got out for a week, and we told all our neighbours to look out for a chocolate lab that was good at coming to their name, which was Sam. Eventually we got Sam back, and two weeks later our neighbour came pounding on the door. My dad answered, Can I help you? The neighbour's like, Your dog got my dog pregnant. Mine is a purebred German Shepherd, and I will be compensated the difference in price for each mutt. You should keep better track of your fudging animals. My dad then called Sam, lifted her up, flashing her cooter right in the neighbor's face. How on earth could my dog knock your dog up? The neighbor went from pissed to embarrassed, when my dad wrapped it up with a, who needs to keep track of their fudging animals, before placing Sam down and slamming the door. I rarely saw that neighbor after that. Edit, I originally said putting her down, not placing for clarification in the comments. I bet your neighbor's dog's name was Snelly. No, Lapis. She was a pretty girl and would play with me and my younger siblings until this happened. Honestly, that was the happiest I've been with my pup and the neighbor's dog with my siblings running about. It broke my heart when she put a shock collar on her. Yikes. And our next story was by user Gino13. Found the rare manager Karen through Uber Eats. I had an incident in my rookie days last year as a food delivery guy for Uber Eats, where the instructions for pickup said, use the driveway or walk in for food. So I went to the drive through and I encountered something I never knew was real. A Karen is the manager and gave me an unnecessarily large amount of crap for daring to clog up her McDonald's drive through line instead of walking in. It devolved into that kind of conflict, where the person has some parts in the wrong, but must get the final jab at you to be in the right, in their la la land in their head. Manager Karen's like, why are you here? Um, I'm here to pick up an order. Like I said to the speak, I mean, why didn't you walk in? Oh, uh, shows her phone with McDonald's instructions zoomed in, trying to be calm and polite through my anxiety, but she looks ticked, like I dropped a deuce on the counter. I'm like, sorry, this is my first time here. The app for pickup instructions says drive through is allowed. Well, not at my store it isn't. I don't care if this is your 100th delivery. I have customers you're blocking and wasting time. You're getting written up on the app for this. From how she's acting, probably an empty threat because she'd have no patience to figure out how. 
Also, can confirm I never got a negative review there. Me, keeps showing the app and pointing to drive through or walk in. Um, miss, I'm just following what the app says. All you have to do is go online and change the instructions for your store. I think this is the default. She's like, yeah, crossed arms. You know how busy I am? I'll do it if I see fit. But don't you dare come to the window next time. I won't. I told you this is my first time here and just following the instructions like they tell me to. You better not. Can I just have the food now? Fine. And she practically tosses the bag and cup at me and slams the window. Window clerk gives that trying to work here apologetic look. The irony of holding me up there for 10 minutes just to yell at me is not lost on me this day. The reason I wanted to post it now is because now that the coronavirus is going around, I have to use the drive through as instructed by every single fast food place in town. And it reminded me of the incident. Oh, to get her place again now if she's still there. If she held you there for 10 minutes, then she torched her per car wait time average. They're supposed to keep it under a certain amount of time, two minutes or whatever. You should report her. 90 seconds is what it's supposed to be back when this happened. Now it's two minutes because of a system that the corporation installed to keep stores from cheating. And I'm pretty sure that system was sending cars unnecessarily into the parking bays so that you can just get more cars through. It's what my bloody McDonald's would do all the time, even though we had two minutes 45. It was a lovely little system we had going. And our next post is by user MadRen15. Tales of my boomer friend. I want to say sorry, off the hop, because this will be long and I've been stewing on this and really need to vent. I have an older friend, let's call her Anne, and frankly, I've known her since I was 13, and in army cadets. She was one of the reservists that helped out at events, and she sort of took me under her wing. In many ways, she became a second mum to me, offering the encouragement that my mum seldom did. She helped me out a lot growing up and into my adult life. For example, when my apartment got sprayed for roaches, she invited me and my cats to stay with her which I appreciated immensely. She retired from a government job about three years ago, and she has no kids and no real hobbies. This was when I noticed some changes in her personality, but I tried to cork it up to her just being that much older and stuff. As much as I love her, she does do things that drive me absolutely insane. For example, one, she is thoroughly convinced that doctors should be able to tell if a baby will be autistic before it's born because of medical science. She told me this after I found out that a good friend of mine's son was autistic and they were expecting their second child soon. Two, she will offer to give me a ride home after work. I work overnights and bus, but insist on spending the next three or four hours driving to places she wants to check out, despite knowing all I want to do is sleep. Three, she constantly tells me that, and I quote, there is no reason for both parents to work and the mother's place is at home taking care of the kids. When you try to point out that the cost of living no longer allows that, she says things like, if parents didn't take fancy trips to Disneyland, they could afford it. Or we'll make a claim about running two households on a single person income without taking into account that A, she had a government job and work part-time in the armed forces. She gets two pensions from that. B, her house had no mortgage because she bought it in the 1970s for like 60K, if that. C, the second household she ran was a two bedroom house in a town outside the city she bought for her mum that no one ever lived in until she sold it. And D, she never had kids, so she didn't have to deal with the cost of raising them. Four, she constantly makes comments about my job as an overnight security guard, calling it a wasted time and a poor profession, despite the fact that I have a good pay, amazing benefits, and a pension with this place. 5. When I still lived in my apartment, she would constantly tell me I needed to buy a house because the building could be sold and not want pet there anymore, despite me showing her in the Tenancy Act that current pets have to be allowed in such a case, just no new pets. She knows my cats and my babies because I'm unable to have children, and she knows how much comments like that hurt. Six, she would constantly tell me how to invest money, 
despite my budget for a while having zero disposable income, and she being taken in by at least three multi-level marketing scans in the last 20 years that I've known her. After my dad died last year, I bought a house with some of the money that he had left to me. She got upset that I didn't go with her to view places she liked, which were all two-story, three-bedroom places, more room than I and my two cats ever need. I picked an older place not far from work, and she could say nothing except how high the property taxes are, but since I can walk to work, I no longer needed a bus pass, so it balances out. She gave me nothing but grief when it came time to sublet my apartment, because she was convinced that my unit had a parking space, but someone else was using it. Parking was not included with the rent. It was a small lot with about 40 spaces for a 60 unit building. She also kept trying to say that the building manager was holding back on application for my unit, so they could tell the person using the parking space for mine that they needed to give it back. Over the last year, a lot of our phone calls have turned into arguments. Normally her telling me how something should be, with me trying to explain how something is. It's like she can't get past that I'm no longer that 13 year old girl anymore. But then, I was not in a good place after my dad died and it was messing with me. I had called her after I found out, in tears. Instead of listening, she immediately started telling me to get a lawyer because she thought my brother would try to screw me out of a share of my father's estate. I just found out my dad had died and all she could make was that people, even family, couldn't be trusted and you just have to watch your back with them. She had trust issues with her family and honestly believed all families were like that. I ended up hanging up on her, telling her that I called because I needed someone to talk to, not give unsolicited advice. Another argument was about a family across the park from her who had a cat. The cat never came into her yard, but she wanted to take the cat and either drop it off at an animal shelter or somewhere else in the city because cats aren't supposed to wander the streets. I told her in no uncertain terms that if she did that, she could get charged with theft and or animal cruelty slash endangerment if she just dumped the poor thing somewhere. I sent a note to the family to warn them to keep an eye on their cat, explaining what I had been told, but not by who. They stopped letting the cat out. The last straw was just after New Year's. I had called to catch up after the holidays and got to telling her about an incident at work where a supervisor had threatened us over night guards by telling us, I can replace you in a heartbeat. The three of us laughed because we all knew that that was BS. No one else in our department is willing to work the overnight shifts and she knows it. But we went into the department manager to talk to him because, despite her being a supervisor, threatening guards with dismissal is not in her sphere of power and we were sick of it. She had called me down on my day off claiming an emergency, just to yell at us all at once. She got rode up for that one. I'm telling Anne about this, thinking she'll be happy too. Score one for the little guy, you know? But boy was I wrong. She started calling me stupid, childish, and saying that no one was irreplaceable, and that my job could be taught in 30 minutes to anyone who came off the street. Saying that what I did was the bottom of the barrel work-wise, and anyone could do it even a trained chimp. I exploded on her, asking her, is it so bad for me to be proud of a job that I had been at for nearly a decade? Told that just because she had been miserable at work and had a horrible time with her higher ups, don't mean that every company lets supervisors get away with it. Told her that my job was more difficult than she could ever imagine because I work directly with the public when so many of them are at their worst. On top of all the training and courses I have to renew every year. I also told her that, unlike her, to get a government job now, you need a degree and I couldn't afford school after I graduated from high school and was paying rent to my parent from the time I turned 16. She was quiet for a moment and said, I don't want to start the new year like this, so I'm going to hang up. As if I was the one that started the fight. Honestly, I felt super guilty afterwards and she refused to take my call, but I've only called twice in the last couple of months, trying to give her space. Again, sorry that this is long, I needed to vent. A big part of me wonders if I should cut ties with her. She has become really toxic and bitter in the last few years, 
and I don't think it's good for my own mental health to deal with this. Oof. I get that she was there for you when you were a little girl and that you felt close to her. But in all honesty, it sounds to me like she's gone off and it might be time to cut ties. For your own emotional and mental well-being. You have reached out twice and both times been rejected. Time to leave the ball in her court and let her do the reaching out. If she does, make sure you emphasize that it will be under your terms. There will be no hostility from her. No rampages, no rants, disparaging remarks, or hate-filled comments. If she can't maintain a nice, friendly conversation, you are willing to talk and visit with her. If she starts up again, hang up and walk out. Don't say anything, just end the discussion. And that's very good advice. I think we all need to hear that sometimes. You, you, it's okay for you to just walk out. Get away from toxic people if they are that detrimental to your mental health. You seriously just need to distance yourself sometimes. Social distancing. Social distancing, guys. That's the one. And our next post by her name. Cousin wants to stay in our house with my elderly dad and tries to guilt trip us into it. Love my dad to bits, but the man is a pushover when it comes to his extended family. They are fudging loons and get on my last nerve on good days. We are tribal. So extended family goes to a whole other level of ridiculousness. One of our cousins has said that he lives in a flat share and doesn't want to stay with his roommates during social distancing and possible lockdown. He was talking to my dad, spinning a real sob story, and my dad, the poor innocent that he is, almost fell into his trap of letting him come and stay with us. Dad is 75, diabetic, and with other health problems. My dad had the phone on speaker. I overheard, went over and muted the call and told my dad that it wasn't going to happen. I then unmuted the call and told this cousin to either stay at his flat or call up someone else. I am not putting my parents at risk for him. He thought he could try the whole where family line. But when I didn't budge, he came up with the brilliant idea of saying, it's your father's house, you can't say no. Oh, 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 my glee knew no bounds at that point. Actually, it's my house, and I let my parents live with me as I love them and don't want them to die from viruses. He shut up, Dad hung up. Dad was a little concerned about him talking about us to the rest of the quote-unquote tribe, but I told him that I will physically kick people out if I have to. Cousin left a voice note in the tribe group chat, but most people were on my side. He was not pleased. And our last post by user toughcookie 247 No, you can't lift up my shirt. So a bit of backstory. I love to watch my friend's kids. They're very good kids for the most part, but when they get into a mood, they get into a mood. Money is tight now, as I'm expecting a little bundle of joy in August. In the past, whenever we would go to a store, I would always buy them a toy or a treat, then we would go to a park. I've watched the two kids since one was like seven and the other was four. They're now six and nine. I didn't expect them to turn into entitled kids on me this day. Their mum took my side and I know they were punished for what they did. EK1 will be the nine-year-old, EK2 will be the six-year-old, F will be their mum who is my friend, me is well me. So I picked up the girls from the Boys and Girls Club, which is like an after-school program to watch kids while parents are at work. And first I saw the oldest, EK1, and we talked about where she wanted to go eat. We decided on a burger place with killer milkshakes. I figured I'd get the kids milkshakes as their treat, and I could grab and drop off one to their mum before taking the girls home. It's still too cold out to take them to a park, and with all the coronavirus, a lot of surfaces that have never been cleaned. So Entitled Kid 2 finally comes over from playing with her friends, screaming my name. She was happy to see me, and she always runs to me and yells my name. That's normal. But this time, she reaches over and tries to pull my shirt up. There are over 100 kids and 10 staff members all running around watching the kids. She's like, no, EK2, you can't see my tummy right now. When we get to your house, I can show you my tummy. I'm pulling my shirt against her and won't let her lift my shirt. But I want to see my baby brother. She starts throwing a full-blown tantrum, 
screaming and falling in the floor, kicking her feet. We are not related by blood, but I'm like their second mum. I don't know the gender of the, my baby yet, but Entitled Kid 2 is really hoping for a baby brother. Get up, Entitled Kid 2. If you keep this up, you aren't getting a milkshake. I told you before, you can't lift my shirt up to see the baby. I'll show you my tummy at the house, but it's not a good thing to lift my shirt up in public. At this point, everyone is looking as I'm trying to calm her down and get her off the floor. After a moment, I get her up and load them in the car. We get the food and milkshakes and I go to my friend's place of work. She works at a superstore in town that sells everything. We go straight to the back of the store and wait for her to meet us at an employee-only entrance for her milkshake. This is when Entitled Kid 1 has her tantrum, which causes Entitled Kid 2 to throw another tantrum. Can we go get a toy? No, we're just dropping off your mum's milkshake and going home. You have toys at home we can play with. Can we just go look at the toys? No, we aren't going that way in the store. Entitled Kid 1 always gets the most expensive toy, then heckles her way down to a cheap toy that I end up buying. You never buy us toys anymore. I want a toy. So now I'm trying to calm the kids down from another full-blown tantrum when my saving grace, their mum comes out of the back, her eyes full of furry. What are you doing? Both kids fall silent. I can hear you across the store. You know better than to act like this, especially with tough cookies. She doesn't need stress with her baby. Both of you off the floor. Now, stand. She points at an empty wall. Both girls sniffle and stand against the wall looking down. Me and my friend talk for a bit. She didn't raise her voice until she said now and stand. She just had that commanding voice all parents get and the kids know they are screwed. I take the girls home, watch them for the next four hours without much of a problem. All right, guys, that's today's episode all done and dusted. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments. I'd love to know your hot takes on this one. And how are you keeping up these days, what with all the, the world going to chaos? If you guys enjoyed this one, don't forget to watch you know, a playlist or another video, whatever floats your goat or your boat or your Australian crocodile. As always, have a good day, night, sleep, evening, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.